thing on here. I don't know if you guys are watching or if you guys are just listening or what, but I'm I'm streaming on. Where is this image? There we go. Uh, well, where are you where are you streaming on? Uh, on Twitch. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so if you want to look there, I could share the I could share my screen here, like I could do. Um, uh, oh, oh, it does the main map. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so I could share it like this, and then you guys could just blow up that window by itself. I mean, that's what Discord has to offer. So I mean, technically, you don't have to Basil oh. or Twitch or something like that. You could just blow this window up. Share and, like this. Oh. And you could, uh, okay. you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, uh, but of course, in you don't get, you don't get the ability to zoom in. Uh, only I can essentially zoom in. Whereas if you're in Vassal, you could zoom in yourself and things like that. So, um, oh, okay. so uh, I think that might be easier if you guys want to go to Vassal. I mean, you can move counters around uh, or whatever as the case may be. You know, if you have a question. And you want to set something up that um you know that's uh we could set up different scenarios or go over different topics or things like that and uh whatever you wanted to discuss is fine with me this is just a first first time session i'm glad all of you came and all of you guys are like prompt as hell i'd be like about 15 minutes late to be honest with you but uh <laughs> but but um yeah i think i think if you wanted to sync on the Vazel server um that would be fine and that way everyone essentially can have access to the toys in the room and um and uh therefore be, be maybe uh make it easier to explain you know what you're trying to uh get or what questions you may have and things like that and so um i mean obviously i could share the uh share the screen here um but um because i want this more of a hands-on thing with everyone involved that you can um you know, you're not you're not excluded from like the map and touching things as you would normally quote be in a in a typical game. So this is just a like I say, the, oh, it's just gonna be an open question thing right now. Uh, I don't know what people have questions with or if they're here just to chill and talk ASLSK. That's fine with me. Um, and uh, and uh, you know, discuss discuss the differences between the scenarios and the rule books and things like that. Uh, if you guys don't know already, I would suggest downloading the SK4 rulebook. There are changes in there that have some clarifications from the other rulebooks. And I just learned this, um, you know, by examples and some of the videos I produced and things like that. So, oh, yeah, that example's all wrong. Oh, yeah, that example's wrong, too. It's like, what? The, what? what? This example's like 14 years old. And there have been like two or three other rulebooks produced. It's like, <laughs> you know, correct your shit and so uh i think uh sk4 has a lot of corrections in there um and uh apparently a lot of people don't know that it's available uh so so yeah we can go with that so what i again i would suggest to everyone if they would want to join the basil server please do so um or if you just want to listen and chatter that's fine but i'm just going to uh stop the screen display here because Again, I think uh, for for you guys to um. Uh, okay, okay. I don't know how to stop the screen thing. Uh, I want this. I don't want this. Do you need to stop using uh, bad extensions? Bad extensions. What extensions? Yeah, I I I can't synchronize to you. All I got is the map. I don't get your pretty little pictures. Uh, what do you mean the pictures? Like you the... saved with the SL thirty one. Uh. Oh, these are these are all. Um, this is the SK. This is just some SK game that I uploaded from the SK library or whatever. Oh, I can't. I can't blame you then. Okay. So, um, the some of these might be outdated. Some of them I know uh have been incorrect. So I don't know if you guys. Let me let me let me disconnect here. If I if I disconnect from the whole are thing, I, seeing... I just want to stop. Oh, hold, sorry. I just wanted to stop that that image right there. It's and apparently the only way to do is disconnect. I haven't used that screen very often, so I'm kind of a noob on it. But uh, again, I suggest everyone just to go to the uh, Vasil server. It's the ASL SK Jam session, and just join the room so that you can see the map or or any map. So we could pick up any map you want, any scenario you want, uh, or any you know any questions you may have on whatever. So. Uh, uh, with that, if you, uh, again, if you guys want to pop in here, 
we got David, we got Mark, and we got Steve uh, in the room right now on the jam session. So um, whoever, uh, we'll just go, we'll just go to the top of the list. Uh, well, other than Steve, but um, but I think um, M is it M H L? Who, who, which, which is that? Mark? Yeah, that's, that's me, Mark. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, uh, let me kind of, let me give you a. I can give you a. Um, darn it! Let me change your thing. I change your nickname. Yeah, I can change your nickname for me. All right. so, so. I just say Mark. Yeah, in the uh, in the uh, basketball room, it's Mark D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Oh yeah, I'll do Mark. I'll do Mark D then. So um, yeah. uh, since since I think uh, I think I saw you pop in the room first, Mark. Again, this is just gonna be kind of like a uh, an open session. Like any questions you guys have. Uh, about stupid stuff or other things like that or discrepancies you might be seeing or um hey should you go to here should you go to asl should you stick with sk you know and things like that and um you know i've been i've been kind of doing some dabbling with uh st <laughs> that steve has noticed in the last day or two about some other games that i've been playing and uh that is also an open game i've been i've been toying with a little bit of lock and load and I can give you my perception on that just from a noob's perspective in terms of another. You should realize, dude, this is actually an intervention. Uh, it, hopefully, stop, yeah. stop, <laughs> it probably is. You. What did you call everyone up? Yeah, it's just. Uh, it's an I, intervention, my friend. I, w I wouldn't doubt it. But um, but yeah, so let me, let me hold on. Let me make sure that the, okay, that screen's there. And I'll put my pretty face on the screen, too, if you guys want to see my ugly face. Uh, I have no idea where it is. But there it is, boom. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I am dressed. I'm not in my underwear. So, <sighs> but, uh, but so go ahead, Mark. Uh, if you have any questions, if you don't have any questions, we'll just, we'll just go to the, uh, the next no, person. No, at this point, no, I mean, I don't have any specific questions. I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of here to hang out and watch for a little, for a little watch and see, see what direction you take this in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what uh okay uh, let me tell you what i've wanted to do for a long time since there's a good number of players here uh what i've wanted to do for quite some time this is what i started the sk um videos uh shoot almost like a year ago now I i'm not sure when the first one was put out but the intent was to make uh most if not all of those scenarios to be um obviously learning type scenarios i mean they um Obviously, I'm an uh, I'm an ASL player. I've played ASL for quite some time, and so um, I'm not playing these games to go in there and like dominate these guys and just and just destroy them. I, I I try to I try to express and try to make corrections to say, hey, you can do this or you can do that. To sort of like uh, like if you were to play a new player face to face, you want to kind of help them through the game, but not tell them what to do, but tell them what they can do. And um, because you don't really want to tell someone what to do, because then they're not thinking for themselves uh, during the game and learning the game. It's that's not conducive really to learning. You're just showing them what to do. But you if you if you, if you tell them their options, then they can choose those options and then and then uh, and then see what those options bring. So that's what I've been trying to do in uh, most of my SK videos that I've played. Uh, some of the SK videos I have played I have it against ASL players and not just SK players. And so therefore, uh, like Dennis Donovan, therefore a lot of times you'll see us, especially the first ones when I started doing it, um, it was difficult for me to adjust to the SK mode because there were so many things you kind of have to um, ignore, like bypassing and, and uh, fire lanes and things like that that are in ASL and are not in SK. And <clears throat> so you have to kind of um, uh, change your game plan to that. And it does play differently. Um, don't, um, the the basics of the games are very, very similar. Obviously, first fire, the whole nine yards. Uh, but the gameplay is different. And uh, just, a, just a, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit. But anyway, what I want to do is have, like, two players play a game, like me and someone else or, or two other players or whatever the case may be. It just depends on the interest involved. And, of course, everyone's in different time zones. But um, that when you have... Um, two players playing and even even like let's say like 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 john and i were playing this game here that everyone else would be watching the game and like say john did something really really crazy and funky and then like three of the other guys said well how do you do that or why do you do that or what rule applies to that then 
those players would be able to interject like at the end of the turn sort of thing. So at least the turns would flow faster. So at the end of the player turn, um, then say, hey, you know, I noticed that John dropped smoke in this hex over here, and then he moved the other direction. How was that possible? I didn't think he could do that. I thought if you dropped smoke, you were done. You know, stuff like that. And therefore make it more interactive um, and have multiple players, uh, uh, essentially everyone learning that game at, uh, at the same time and able to ask questions because so many games, I mean... Uh, you can try to get in some games. You want to. You just want to sync up on their on their Skype server just to listen in, and guys uh, may not be willing to do that. Of course, it's their prerogative. But um, you know, having uh, people listening into your game is not that big a deal. But uh, well, to me, in, in, in my in my from my perspective, I don't mind people watching or listening to my games. But uh, obviously, you don't tell them, you know, what to do with the play or whatever like that. So. Uh, you just kind of watch and it's like watching TV, you know watching squad leader without people talking about it while hearing them discuss things um, Is is pretty bad to be honest with you. I mean, I like ASL like like most of you guys obviously since that's why you're here But watching it out without actually listening to the players involved uh, uh, It's lacking. It's very lacking and um, You just gotta bounce around so luckily I got into a couple games like that but that's the kind of gist that I've been trying to get a hold to. Um, uh, me doing it like every weekend, every third weekend of the month or something like that. I'm not a big schedule guy, so um, maybe maybe I could start doing that. I don't know. It's kind of like teaching an old dog new tricks. But, um, but something like that might prove helpful to more players at the same time, uh, I think. Uh, I think it's a be I think it's a decent venue and uh, considering we're using something like discord uh, I think discord's easier than Skype to use simply because I could share my screen uh, Pop a video on there you guys can you guys can chat or you can immediately like let's say John and John uh, Wanted had a question about something maybe John had a John Kuzak or Kuzak had a question specifically about something like that and then John wanted to talk to John about that, then you guys could like immediately pop into like ASL SK one room and discuss that, you know, outside the group. Like you, like you take him outside and discuss him like that. And then you come back in the room and, and, uh, and I, I think that's, that's easier to do in discord than, than it is in Skype. I really don't think that Skype has an option other than just calling that guy individually. Um, uh, and, uh, let's say Mark D, uh, wanted to join in on the conversation as well. Um, he can do that and uh so i think um the ability to uh jump between rooms is a little stronger in discord of course you know uh a lot of people like skype a lot of people like you know uh team speak and things like that and um that works well but um uh, i'm kind of like a discord right now and you know i have to use skype just like everyone else but uh so um again just um i've been wanting to get some guys together four or five guys or whatever two guys play a game and then uh i mean even they play the game i don't have to play the game and just us watch and then if they have questions they could just ask questions to make a learning environment versus a um a overly competitive environment and that, that's kind of the idea that i've been having for quite a long time i just kind of really haven't organized it and done it so it's like you know let's just do it a lot of people are home you know a lot of people this covid thing they're just staying in their homes obviously the vowsal traffic uh, directly reflects the ability of people just being home and, and the demand for uh, knowledge about Vazel and how to use it. So um, this could be any number of those things. If you don't, if you've never played Vazel with Vazel before, we can go over little BS things in Vazel. I mean, it doesn't really have to be specifically SK, but uh, but we can do whatever you guys. Well, again, this is the first session. We're kind of I'm taking this, you know, taking the horse by the reins and trying to trying to break this pony in. So, um, but, so if anyone has any questions or uh, any comments they want to have, again, you could either, uh, another thing in discord, you could actually text the, the individual directly. Like if I want to talk to John, uh, I just click on John's name and then it says message at John Kuzak. So I could say, you know, hi to John and it sends a message directly to him. We don't leave the discussion room, but yet he receives a message from me and it pops up on his menu screen. Uh, so you could actually have a side discussion, sort of like in the text box, uh, without everyone, uh, without everyone, anyone else knowing. Like you say, hey, I think this dude looks kind of funny, or 
Look, he cut his mustache. He cut his mustache awkward. He looks like a goon, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> you, you, can, you can throw side jokes on the side and, uh, you know, just have a regular discussion. It's a little more freely to be able to do that. So um, anyone, if anyone has any questions, if you want to go over something, just let me know. Uh, just kind of make it like specific. Uh, we can go over just general tactics on certain things, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, we can go with that and... Uh, well, I just want to make this your guys' session right now, and uh, if we if we have like you know a bunch of guys saying, "Oh, let's let's all cover this," then you know we could set that. You know, if I'm not prepared for it or whatever, we could I could I could develop uh, like a game plan. I'm not much of a teacher; I don't do a lot of displays and stuff like that, stuff like some other people. But um, I could at least reread the rules in terms of SK and what SK allows. SK pretty much allows a lot of what ASL does on on the um on the um sort of like the general level uh, but there are certain things that um are disallowed so i don't want to give you misinformation i just want to kind of clarify things if you guys have something foggy in your eyes so um, don't, don't worry Stuart. If, if you do I'll, I'll 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 step on you yeah oh yeah hey mark are you the guy that, that makes those great comments on my videos yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, excellent. Well, shit, you should be conducting this. Oh my! <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark is really good. He points out some really good stuff, and uh, it's uh, it's really helpful to everyone that watches and reads if they read the comments. And I suggest you read the comments on many of the uh, videos that you guys watch because there's a lot of good stuff in them. And um, uh, for whatever reason, I've been having a better better uh, discussion comments um, lately for whatever reason. Um, and, uh, I think they really add to it because we, you know, obviously when you're playing a game versus teaching a game, you're in a different mode. And so you always forget stuff and, um, you know, you may be feeling differently that day or whatever, but, um, but yeah, I made a, I made a lot of errors in that last one, but I had a lot of fun in that last game. And, uh, and that's all it really matters is you're having fun. And, um, you know, if, if you're playing solo all the time, and uh, this is just my opinion, of course. Uh, a lot of war gamers play solo, but if you're just a solo guy and you just want to chill, and uh, let's say you you don't really feel confident with the rules, and um, you know I don't really think any ASLer really feels confident with the rules in terms of you know getting everything right. And um, I, I've watched a lot of games um, because I'm just kind of a chill guy. I just kind of bounce around the rooms and watch a lot of games, and just by observing the games, even without even listening to the discussion i see a lot of gameplay errors and so um just because you might be a new player and uh you might be playing or watching some players that have been playing for three five ten fifteen thirty years you know uh it doesn't mean they're not going to make any mistakes uh the rule book's too big too long too convoluted too confusing uh contradictory even at times that um that's just the nature of the game. You're going to get some things wrong. And uh, as long as you um, learn uh, learn from it, if you learn, like I say, if, I, if you learn one thing uh, during each of your scenarios, you know, after 10 or 15 scenarios, you've learned 15 different things. And uh, that helps that helps to bridge the gap in the, in the uh, for you having a more confident game and a game that you can, you know, have more fun at because you, you know certain little things that can happen you know, in terms of either attacking or, you know, routing, where should, where should I route to, you know, where should I put my leaders, you know, uh, I happened to watch a setup, I think it was an image on Facebook where, uh, if it's one of you guys, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't know the guy's name, so I won't point it out, but um, uh, it was like War of the Rats, and he had both of his Russian leaders, like, or, like, all of his leaders, like, on one side, and all of his other, you know, half, you know, three quarters of his force, essentially was isolated without leaders and um you know that's that you're just asking for disaster at that point because any of those units that break that are away from the leaders that they can't get to obviously are pretty much just gonna die so um that's uh that's another thing i mean if you could we could go okay hey what's the what would be a good setup for this and let's just let's just go over the scenario if you guys are linked in the scenario we uh, this i'll just go over here with something screwy and stupid that i did one time i uh, I played this scenario. This is uh, S6. Is it released from the East? No, 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 no. This is S3 Simple Equation. So I played this maybe twice before. Uh, random opponents. And I played the Americans. I played the Germans. 
And um, uh, like again, it's it'd be easier for you guys to watch this about. But as the Germans, you know, you've got these, and I've covered this in in my videos, and I'll just cover uh, I'll just cover it here. Is a lot of times you'll have uh, guys will set up their four thirty sixes, let's say on the left hand side there. Well, in this orientation, the left hand side in the stone buildings. Uh, to defend against the Americans coming on, and that's fine and dandy. Uh, but then the Americans come on. You know they got the big giant six 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 stacks. You know they got they got these big boys coming on here, and and uh, for you guys that are actually watching it, what what issues what issues should you concern yourself with as the Americans, and what issues should you concern yourself with as the Germans in this in this situation? Given SK, I mean anyone can chop it. Chime in here. Well, range would be the first thing I would look at. There you go. Absolutely. Range for whom? Well, range, well, for both. I mean, but especially, I mean, for the Germans in this setup, obviously they can't hit the Americans in the forest from where they are. They can't, or they can only hit them at half firepower. Right, right. And, um, you know, and, and so, you know, the American can basically just stand back at will and just blast you into bits. Right. I mean, that probably takes some prep fires, <laughs> violating that rule. Um, nah. Just like just to just to just to eliminate that whole left side and just start rolling it up right right and would you, and would you need to eliminate like like you said the prep fire everyone says you know if you're prep firing you're losing well that's not absolutely true um now in this sort of situation would you need to break all those squads mark if you were prep firing like let's say you let's say you just did a 16 chart you just added all three of them and you wanted to get because they're, they're in stone buildings this it's, they're right. it's still pretty tough yeah be, not gonna be so, trivial most of the time you're gonna do fire groups six plus three is kind of garbage but uh let's just say you combine them all so it's gonna be three fire phases you're gonna be shooting at these guys assuming they don't skulk back and go forward that sort of thing and that's a concept you guys can we can discuss if you want <clears throat> but uh it will take some time to break them but technically you won't even need to break all of them and here's where the the reason might exist let's say um Stu, let's, if i can just jump in real quick sure. uh I can't, there's uh, because of the extensions. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the other gentleman on if they can see what you're doing or not. Okay. But I can't sync to you. I got nothing. You get I got nothing. The, the huh? boards. I, I get the boards. The same thing as when we tried to set up that other game. Oh, no, what, what, what do you see? You get the boards though, right? But what do you see? What else do you yeah. see? Nothing. You don't see units. I don't see anything. I got two boards. What what version of what version of uh, of Vassal are you running? Six four. Oh, uh, this is right. this was loaded on six five. Okay, well I can I'll I'll do six yeah, five. I think, I think there are problems between six four and six five. You yeah. Might want to have... This was loaded on six right. five, but the map in itself and all that gunk was built on a different thing. So I'm I'm in six five looking backwards versus six four looking backwards. Okay, well I will redo that and see what happens. Yeah. I'll keep it shut for a little bit till I find out what's going on. And I usually don't I usually don't update to the brand the the newest version uh, immediately. Um, just simply because you guys might have some games going on and so finish those games and those other versions uh i probably got you know three or four versions in my vassal uh front page and there therefore you know if i have older games yeah, yeah. i load, yeah, just, I load one. those games but yeah so that that would be a, a an issue there so and that was my and that was my shtick in um in this game is the germans you gotta spread your forces out and another thing i see in this particular game um is i see and uh, I usually see something like this. You know, the Americans are coming on. The, the Americans set up down here in the green, all right? Uh, and they're coming on this way. And um, this is, this, this uh, again, this applies to SK. And, and uh, I think there's a, there might be a row missing. But um, I, always, I always see about 80% of the games, there's usually like a squad in P1. Uh, a squad in LMG in P1. I mean, that's, I mean... You don't have a lot of support weapons in this one, and uh, LMG's fine and dandy there. I mean, he's gonna take a couple shots. The only real purpose I would see uh, in putting a unit this far forward in such a precarious position, and uh, and we'll go why this precarious position is is that you might get like a, a shot, like say a squad moves into L4 or something like that. He might get a, a a poor shot because a lot of these SK boards you can shoot between a lot of the buildings quite easily. Which is fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, so he might get a uh, two minus, you know, two minus two uh, twice because he fires the LMG and then he fires the squad separately because you're going to deal with lots of units. Um, but so let's say let's just say he fires and breaks one of these guys, whatever. And uh, let's say this guy with uh, a leader, 
uh, we want to go with the big boy minus two. Let's just say this giant stack pretty much moves up with impunity right here. That, of course, the Germans are going to set up in here. Um, and these guys go over here. As soon as this unit breaks, he's pretty much screwed, which is going to be real easy for a, a 12 or a 16 chart from the Americans. And I don't even put the mediums on there. So when he breaks, he's in a bad position. And this is what you need to think about, uh, not only when you're setting up, but when you're moving and things like that. Sort of like my intro um, idea I was giving um, on the poll is that uh, knowing where to position your units so you can route them properly and keep them alive uh, is one of the biggest kind of like sleeper factors in this game. Uh, Everyone, you know, everyone has difficulty with the defensive fire phase, which is fine. Uh, the movement phase, when, when, how can I defensive fire? When do I, how do I subsequent first fire? You know, what's the firepower in this? Can I fire on this unit and things like that? Uh, I think there's been a couple of questions just recently about, you know, if I first fire, can I fire at another unit at long range and things like that? Um, personally, I think those are kind of spelled out in the rules, but uh you know if you're coming from uh, a different game system and this is your first time delving into this sort of thing without anybody else you're just doing it by yourself it, it can be confusing but just a little bit of explanation will work out but anyway um and we can go over that if anyone wishes to that's which is fine but uh, uh i personally believe that um positioning your runes in terms of thinking about when they will break because they will break and they will break at times where you don't want them to um, to be able to route to a safe location and not only a safe location, but a safe location that your leaders can help them um, and um, There have been instances like I think uh, and, and do you want to route the maximum? Uh, distance away Let's say let's say the, bro the unit was broken here on that open ground location Let's say he moved there for whatever reason the Americans fire him broke him and he wants to route uh, Let's see. There's a, a leader over here um, you know, depending on your game situation, this, of course, this varies between situations. You may not necessarily always want to route two, four, six, the furthest away, uh, from the enemy unit. Again, it all depends on what you're doing. If you're defending, that might be fine. But if you're attacking, let's see the Germans were attacking down that way. If you're, if you're moving back two, four, six, especially say if it's a conscript unit, which will have six movement factors when they're broken, but only three when they're moving, you know, assuming he doesn't have a leader. So if this, if you had a conscript and a normal unit right there, and they both route six movement factors back there, well, that's pretty much two turns of movement to get back to where the hell they started from, you know, uh, uh, sends, you know, advance phase, that sort of thing. So for the, for the regular second line unit, he can go two, four, and then advance phase, let's say if he were rallied. Let me just rally him. So he can get back to that same location, but the broken unit, the other guy, can only go two, three, or if he wanted a CX, he can go two, four, and then five. But um, again, if you if you can get to a better position, let's say let's say that first that first building hex was good, and it was you know uh, your movement phase is coming up next turn, and then you get the leader, keep them up front so where they can they could still progress on the attack, then you're good to go. Uh, I think uh, I think there was a situation like in uh, the costly baptism game where Steve and I played. Uh, as soon as my unit broke on the bottom part, and he the only place he could route to was back to the woods. I knew that unit was out of the game because it was a short game, and for me to get a leader back there, rally him, and bring him to the front um, is very time consuming. And sometimes, you know, if you if you're leading an assault, you want your front troops to have the leader with them in case they break in a better frontal position that they don't have to route back as far as, as well. And um, you see, that's like I say, that's just one, one little example about routing. Oh, another thing about routing. Um, let's say this unit is broken here. Uh, actually, let's say he's broken there. Uh, it makes a little difference in terms of um, the Americans because the Americans are really long range. But um, anyway, um, uh, ninety percent of the people will just low crawl here. And uh, Mark, you could you could probably chime in on this. Why would you low crawl that unit versus, um, let's say, let's say we're 
What's what's the difference in low crawling one unit and having just going through and taking interdiction? Any, anybody can chime in here. What what are we looking at here? Well, you're looking at a morale check. So yeah. um, your conscript units are going to have uh, probably a tough time, or much tougher time surviving that uh, surviving that uh, morale check than the uh, than the Americans are going to. Right, right. For any elite unit. So therefore. Um, a lot of guys will default, just simply default to low crawl simply because it's open ground. They don't want to take a interdiction check because, you know, it's a free morale check or whatever. But in this case, obviously, I mean, a six bodes ill will for the conscript. I mean, that's a six is pretty hard to roll normally. A five will pin him. So, um, and then a four or less is the only thing that won't have an effect upon him. Whereas conversely the the american eight morale unit and um yeah well the, I, I was going to say something else about some other units but the eight morale unit here obviously seven or less is clean and he can continue movement eight's a pin so he's not going to go anywhere but you have to roll nine ten eleven or twelve which is you know like a maybe what 26 percent or whatever percentage chance it might be but it's not yeah 20 percent chance it's not too bad but um but if you need that guy out then he he's one of the best units that can route and get to safety, especially um, if you need him back there or, or if he might be stuck there. Uh, and another another uh, yeah the, the 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 four five the four three six conscript definitely you know low crawl uh, for it. But and then you ask and then you might ask say hey Stu well if, if he low crawls there he's in open ground and then um, he's going to be subject to fire from the Americans. Now this is the, now this is the point that I like to make that most players um, either either miss or or don't want to do or whatever let's say let's say the route phase comes and goes right so I low crawl there and um, next turn let's say it's the Americans turn next right and you have uh, a couple other German units like up in front let's say you have other points of interest for the Americans other than that simple broken unit right let's say there's an HMG here you know a big boy let's say you got a eight minus one leader on it so there's a point of interest that the Americans might be concerned with. And let's say these Americans are out of LOS in this unit. So you only have these units in the center that can see that broken unit. In the rally phase, you can do this because your turn is coming up next as the Germans, right? And let's say this is the only broken unit. Or um, other things you could do is, I, first of all, lose, lose the DM. I would, you can choose to lose the DM if he's in open ground. But in this case, I would lose the DM straight up, especially if you need to keep a frontal force, <clears throat> because it is two things. Um, if the American player sees a DM on this unit, right, and he knows the German player's turn is coming up next, right, at the end of the rally phase, obviously he can't self-rally because it's the American player's turn. At the beginning of the German player's turn, the German player may self-rally a multi-man counter that doesn't have a leader in the text as, as its first role. And obviously, this guy's not going to self rally because he's already DM'd. I just, it's just not. But if the German player, obviously, it's desperation, rem remove the DM from the unit there. Uh, it does, it does two things. Well, um, two things are going to happen in this sort of situation. I don't want to get you confused. One is, um, let's let's say he's let's say he's a little further over. That that is an LOS there to that same unit. Let's just say the same thing applies because otherwise I'll, I'll go over the, the reason why I moved him over there in just a second. So the, so the American player has two, pretty much two targets to fire at the HMG, which is a pretty key target as everyone would probably agree, or try to destroy this unit over here. Well, again, you want to, I would choose to lose that DM over there because as the German in your next rally phase, um, if he's one of the all few broken units that you have that you can get to, then you could try to self-rally that unit needing a uh, four or less because a self-rally penalty of one applies and you are not in the bonus terrain of woods or building. So a four is better to roll than a one as we had before. But so what that what that gives the Americans is let's say the Americans, uh, let's say if that was a higher morale level unit because a five is not that a five is not that that easy to do. Let's say that unit was an eight morale unit. Let me just get an, uh, an access eight ML unit out here real quick. Uh, let's say a four six eight. Grab an assault engineer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Let's say a four <laughs> six eight 
was broken there just for just for example because uh, it's harder to self rally that but now let's say we have a unit that we actually have a decent chance of self rally I mean it's an excellent chance of rallying this unit right he would need to roll an eight uh, or seven or less to rally that unit so now the Germans uh, the Americans knowing that he's got a prime target of the HMG in the center even with a conscript I mean that's 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 a juicy target because they could break easily if he decides to fire upon, you know, everything he's got here, if everybody fires here, <laughs> the advanced fire marker, there's a discussion on that thing. <laughs> uh, so he prep fires here and fires on this unit, or advanced fires or what have you. Let's say he prep fires on that unit and nothing happens. But he wanted to break it because he thought it was a sweet, juicy, easy target. Now the Germans, simply because he low crawled backwards and lost his DM, he selected to lose his DM, then this unit will come back on uh let's see where's the rally oh that's uh somebody else's rally there's my rally roll so let's say i roll a six for a rally now he's back up and fighting in the german player's turn so now essentially what that does is preserve your frontal forces um so they can actually do something now if, obviously if he rotted way back here and he's out of the fight he's pretty much gonna be out of the fight even if he rallies you know uh, because let's say these Americans were here, they were going to move up, you know, the turn after that. If this guy rallies, I mean, all he really has to do is advance phase later on or whatever, or you can prep fire. But essentially that gives you a couple more options. And the reason why I moved him over here is um, is that if this unit is broken, and, and, you, and this is another thing that you need, you could take into consideration in your games. Uh, let's say he loses his DM because he wants to do exactly what I was talking about. Um, and this you and this unit prep fires on the left hand side over to I2 at the HMG and the conscript guy. So what happens is um, in the in the route phase, if you are in normal range of an enemy unit that and in open ground, then you would become DM. So and that's the reason I moved to H3. So this unit in in uh, P0 is in normal range of the American squads. So the American squads in the beginning of the route phase, by virtue of the routing rules, automatically DM that unit by being in normal range and not having any hindrances and things like that in the way. So because they could apply technically apply the first fire move in the open. So he would automatically become DM at the end of the American player route phase or at the beginning of the American player route phase. So he doesn't even need to fire on him. And the reason why I moved him over to H3 is now he's outside the American normal range. So therefore he will not become automatically DM'd. And that gives the American player the choice, a harder decision. Well, do I fire 12 here or do I keep that strong unit DM'd? And, um, and that's what you can do uh, as a squad leader player is uh, give your opponent tougher decisions to make. Uh, he might see that unit and say, hey, that's a juicy target. Let me fire on that because I could actually kill him. And uh, and therefore, that saves one at least one 12 firepower attack on your central defending unit, your HMG here. So he has a choice. Do I try to break the HMG in a stone building? Or do I get the free DM shot on the guy on the right-hand side? So uh, the more choices you give your opponent, the more apt they are to make a wrong strategic decision um, in terms of their gameplay. Of course, the dice always decide what's right or wrong, but um, but in this case, if he's in J three, uh, based in the route when the routing phase comes around, he would be in normal range in open ground and therefore automatically get the DM. And um, uh, if if the American player here doesn't know that rule or doesn't know that stipulation, he might fire on P zero just to DM him. And therefore, waste that free opportunity that he would have to fire on I2 or some other target. Because as long as those Americans stay there, and let, let's say the, the Germans, of course, if the Germans uh, break the unit, you have to be in good order. Because the Germans could always defensive fire. Let's say nothing happens to these American units during the interim. Uh, if they remain good order in, in that sort of situation, then they would automatically DM him over here. Obviously, if he doesn't fire on him, thinking that he's going to get the free DM, and then the the uh, the Germans attack and they break these guys, then 
even though they're a normal range uh, of the units, these guys are not good order. And so therefore, they would not get a DM on them. And so, but they would have to break for that to happen. So, um, so it's little, little, little things to think about. Um, I don't know if you guys have thought about that or actively play with that during your games. But that's one of the small little tricks, again, just of routing, just simply of routing that um, most players will just automatically go directly back. And um, and remember, um, the routing has to be within the closest in MF, not in hexes, in MF. And that can come and bite, bite you in the butt sometimes. Uh, it won't really do it too much, per se, in... Um, in <clears throat> this board here, but let's go to let me pop up another map to bring a situation where that will That will make a difference Let me see what's what's the hill. Do you know the hill board in um, uh, I think it's 30 it's I know the scenario it's It's the first one in s3 Darn it. Uh, oh, uh, it's Joseph351. Here we go. <coughs> so sync with me again when I pop up with just Joseph351, if it opens. There it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 633. Wow, wow. Those are using 633. No. So go ahead and resync with me on this one. And uh, I'm sorry, Stu. Uh, wh where is three synchronize on the um, on the vassal stuff? Uh, you could you could right click uh, right click on my name or the room. You could you could either pop in oh, okay. the room or you could right click yeah. my name and then okay. sync. Sometimes it's kind of it's kind of wonky and it doesn't do it, but sometimes it does. Yeah. No, um, no, I did. I can just never find it. I don't know. It's just one of those things that I just can never seem to find. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot of things in Vassal that yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah, Vassal, yeah, particularly. But I that's played, what... uh, I, sometimes it still takes oh. me a long time to find counters. But um, Every time I go, I can't find it. So, okay. Go. So, uh, mostly like in routing, uh, on the same elevation, closest closest cover in MF is, is, pretty, is pretty standard. Let's say this unit was broken, right? And he's going to route to the closest cover. So, uh, let's just say there's like some Russians up here um, uh, and let's say there's some guys all right here so um so the closest cover in this case would be which hexes in M. closest cover in MF would be which hex or hexes anyone uh, B1 and Z1 are equidistant both three movement factors right and oh, and then X, actually X0, too. Yeah, X0, Z1, and V1 are all three movement factors away, and they are all either building, uh, woods, uh, rally, essentially rally to lane. That's what we're looking for. So th those are our destinations. Yeah, absolutely. So you have that sort of situation. So when you're on the same elevation, it's pretty simple. But let's go to a situation where you might have something like this. And let's say the Russians are over here. So we can't route to the to the right. Or let's say he could actually, oh uh, yeah. Let's say, yeah, that's the situation there. So um, what would be the closest in in uh, MF at this point? Where would be his where would be his destination hex at this point? Let's let's actually move him here. So if he was here, what what destinations, what are his destination hex or hexes? And why or why not? Okay, we got Z10, AA10. Any other locations that he might be? Um, X10 probably works because that's still two X's away. Uh, well, three moving factors and two X's away. Well, th well, three moving factors. The hexes is irrelevant. Right. Yeah. Is, so, yeah. Yeah. Three, but but he's no closer to the stack of Russians than right. Money. Right. And so this 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 can involve a number of things going on. Um, uh, one, he could go to X X ten, and um, that is a viable routing destination. Uh, it's not getting closer to him, but it's not getting further away from him. But that doesn't matter. But yeah. because it's not getting further away from the the unit there, let's say, let's say this were the uh, let's say that uh, we'll go to a different situation in just a minute. 
Um, he could ignore X10. Even if that was the only one within range, let's say none of the woods on the left-hand side, all these woods over here do not exist. And that was the only woods hex in in uh, in in MF, in six in the six MF that he could reach. He can ignore that location because it's not further from the enemy unit, and then he could just route somewhere else. Right. But um but Z ten is obviously an option, A ten is another option. Now when we go here, and let's say the units are right here. Uh, let's say the units are right here, for instance. Uh, now, what destinations can he go to in this in this instance? Well, he still has to choose. He still has to choose AA ten as his initial target hex. He can't go. He can't choose AA nine as his target hex because that would cost him four. Right, and Z ten. Yeah. Why can't he choose Z ten? Because it's adjacent. Right. So in this case. The destination, the initial target hex is AA-10. So he has to move there. Let's say he wants to go to AA-9. He can't initially go to AA-9 because of what Mark said, because that would cost four movement factors going up versus, you know, these right here, the, the two here. Um, okay, and the same thing, uh, And, and uh, but once he reaches this destination... Then he may continue to route as long as as long as he can continue to route through woods or building hexes at that point. So he could go two movement factors there, and then he could go four to A nine. Let's see, he had a leader up there, or he could go four to BB nine. He may continue to route, but his initial destination. Once he reaches that destination hex, he may continue to route based upon other terrain that he can go through the woods or building. So. Uh, Let's take another instance of routing. How about how about this one right here? How about um, uh, one, two, three, four? Okay, let's try this one right here. Let's get these Germans off the off the map. Okay. Now the American units are broken here, and let's say he wants to route. In this case, he doesn't have to route because he's not in normal range of these units. Uh, let's just put a German here. He still doesn't have to route. Why? If this if this if this if this is the game situation, does does this unit have to route? Uh, it's not an interdictable hex because of the orchard. Right. The LOS is going to be drawn through the orchard hex, and if, uh, if that's not clear to you, you can just you can string it. LOSs for for purposes of determining legal route destinations are free to make. In the route phase so that will clip or go through the orchard hex even if it goes alongside the orchard hex like say this say that were the los it would still be a hindrance so because the orchards are considered inherent terrain which means their hindrance modifiers applies through the hex sides as well so uh, so he doesn't have to route but let's say the american decides i'm going to route this unit what would what destination or destination hexes could he go to? Oops, I moved it. Mark? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I would tend to say even if you would like to go up to DD7, you can't because that costs four. You yeah, probably have to go to um gg whatever that gg hex is the one that's yeah ggx yeah yeah gg yeah gg whatever <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, exactly. uh, yeah yeah i'm not quite sure what number that end up being yeah, yeah, but, it's what, yeah exactly it's, it could be it's yeah, gg it's double gg gg7 probably we might guess um yeah. yeah i can't remember what the asl rules are for like what was the northeasternmost board or whatever yeah. Yeah, it's, that's obscure. But either, either way you want to identify it, you can identify it as this board's GG or this board's GG. But anyway, yeah, yeah Mark's right. And this and this is and this is where the concept of of closest in MF is key to understand. Although DD7 is closer in hexes, about 50% of the players, if not more, will just instinctively just route here. And then maybe continue to route to this one because he doesn't want to be an LOS. Let's he goes up, boom. That's four, six, right? You know, that's he could he could route there by terms of, of movement factors, but in terms of the rule, he has to go to the nearest one in movement factors. 
And so even though this GGX is three movement factors away, he still has to choose this destination over this destination in all terms of the rules. So now, of course, that destination is the same distance away from the 447. Let's say, let's say it was like here. So, uh, so it's, it's further away. So he could route here. In this case, he has to route. He could route here because he's not getting closer to the enemy unit. That looks like he is, but he's not. That's still three hexes away. He can either route there or decide to route down here. His choice. Uh, but there, but there's the key point is you need to make sure that still clips that FF8 because if he were to go into open ground hex, then he would be interdicted. Right. So therefore, it clips it. Um, so either destination is safe for him to route through from this unit, and then he can co continue to go here. Now, um, <clears throat> um, actually, do you mind if I chime in with a question? Yeah, go right ahead. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess my question with regards to routing is, uh, when are you allowed to take line of sight checks for interdictions? Are those, are those free? Are you allowed to make as many line of sights as you want while you're trying to determine where you can route to? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, okay. <clears throat> and you have to take into, well, especially in ASL, it's, it's a little different, but we won't, we won't cover that. But in determining a legal route destination, um, uh, you have to, you ha you are free to take as many LOS checks as you want. Uh, okay. For interdiction, because they're not, you're not firing. It's just an right. interdiction morale check. It's almost like an event that happens. So no, no units are marked with counters or anything like that. Okay. So the LOS so, checks so are free to make. Uh, obviously, you know, if you're playing with somebody that, you know, does LOS checks from like a hundred thousand units, you know, um, once he finds one that has an interdiction, let's say he's got a guy here, and then um, you you you, you kind of want to avoid this sort of situation, where um, where a guy's like right here, right? So let's say, let's say, um, well, it's got to be normal range too. Let's say uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Let's say this were the case, right? And um, so you've got a unit on the left hand side, right? Well, let's let's assume he's a four six. Uh, let me let me let me increase him. Oops, hold on. And uh, I'll let you know. I'll tell you why I want to. I'll harden him. Yeah. Two, yeah. There three, you go. Four, five. I want to give him a six range because he can't interdict. In, uh, he can't interdict out of normal range. So if he's at, like. If, if this unit were here, and if this unit wanted to route here, he wouldn't be interdicted by the 447 because it's outside his normal range. Right. And uh, the, by the same token we were discussing earlier, this unit wouldn't automatically get a DM at the beginning of the route phase because it's outside his normal range. And that's why I changed that guy to a 467 to, to establish this sort of example. Um, we know... We know we pretty much know for a fact that this look... Let's say the American wanted to route here or here, right? So you know for a fact that this unit is going to be obstructed by a hindrance from FF8. So you really don't have to check that LOS from this unit, right? Uh, it just kind of, you just go straight down the line, very simple to want to take. The same thing with this unit, it goes straight down the line, simple to take. And this one here is a straight LOS from there to there. You really don't need to take an LOS check there because you know it's clear. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come into a situation like this, right? And let's let's improve this guy to a four uh, a four six seven as well to keep him with a normal range. So this LOS, would you agree? Would everyone agree that that's a clear? Yeah, that one really doesn't need to be taken. You don't really need to check that LOS. Would you? Would most of you guys agree that that is the case? Yeah, I would probably. Yeah, that that looks to me that's obviously clear, right? Okay. So but one the... over here, ah, eh, it's kind of sketchy, right? And the one over here definitely is sketchy, right? But let's say, um, let's say you don't want to really kind of go overboard. And um, not that I've experienced this per se, because ASL players generally are um, good-hearted people. But you might come across some players that are really hardcore. It's like, well, uh, let me see if this guy in DD zero interdicts you. Uh, okay, that's blocked. And let me see if this guy over here interdicts you. And he goes, uh, okay, that's 
super duper super duper <laughs> close right yeah you, know, you can zoom in here but but it's clear right and so yeah. essentially what the person might be doing and obviously if you've got a clear shot just use that one theoretically you can legally want to take this guy los but what does that do what is what, what do you think that player's doing well he's scouting for future fire opportunity exactly exactly especially a fire opportunity from here and here you know because this guy's not going to be many so therefore if he knows that los is clear from the quote interdiction that means when you have other troops coming along let's say he drops some let's say a, a smoke is dropped here for whatever reason right because the american thinks this one's clear and he goes pop pop then he gets popped by this guy for free and so um when you have a free and you have when you have an obviously clear los you know uh just be a good sport and don't try to cheat don't well this guy's gonna be out of range anyway so it doesn't really he, I, technically he can't even take that los check because it won't matter he won't be interdicted but this right. guy would but you know you know, obviously you know you could take it from any units but if he's interdicts it that's that's all that matters and so kind of you know, I mean, you can do what you want, but uh, that's, I mean, there are players that like to um, kind of like use the rules to their maximum advantage. And uh, mm -hmm. is that legal to check from him? Yeah, sure. But um, yeah. but you could say, theoretically, if you say, well, I want to check from him, especially if you're playing face-to-face, -face, well, you know, this guy interdicts, so it doesn't matter. So, you mm -hmm. know, just, just like Mark was saying, he, he could have future potential LOS checks where he may or may not know especially in a close situation. To me, that looks like it's going to be blocked anyway, but um, you never know. You never know this game. You know, you think it's clear, and then all of a sudden half the building's in your way. So, yeah. um, but that's what we're looking at there. Oh, I almost dumped my salad on me. Uh, so, um, but but going with Mark's question, yeah, you could take any interdiction checks from any any direction. Um, and and it, conversely, if you are, if you're the person who has to route and you're trying to determine whether you have a legal route, can you then take, like trace any path you want and trace line of sights to any of your opponent units? Um, and check to see whether they're in, whether they're interdictable or not? Or is it at the point where you just say, hey, this is my target, I'm going there. You start to route and hey, if you get caught in the open in interdiction, well, that's too bad. Um, you. You, I don't think you could check it beforehand. The um, right. I think the exception might be, and I don't want to go into ASL because um, there are no prisoners in in um, AS, SK, and right, pretty yeah. much you can always low crawl away with impunity. You can always route away with impunity, so there's no real damage taken, and that's probably why you see a lot of players would just simply just low crawl, you know, low crawl. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna low crawl, which is cool. You know, which is cool. It's viable. In this case, you know, if it's a key situation, he doesn't really have a lot of other places to go. You know, low crawl him. You know, or if or or, or if going here serves no other purpose, and he's going to get blasted by like an eight chart or a sixteen chart over here, you might want to keep him out of that fire zone. Like, let's say if he's got these two guys over here, maybe I just want to take this shot up top. Maybe I just want to take a shot from him instead of, you know, potentially a shot from both of them. So I just want to stay behind the cover. Well, assuming he could legal, let's say he'd go over here, because that way that's out of LOS, and he still has to go there anyway. You know, let's say he just low crawls here because he doesn't want to take that giant shot. He wants the he wants the Germans to move to shoot at him. So, but yeah, um, in SK, I don't. I think right, you don't think you you can check line of sights. You basically have to just say, hey, here's my target, and the target is legal. Okay, because you're farther away from everybody or whatever. Right. But, and once yeah. that's the case, then you start routing. You can choose, I guess, when, once you've found the closest one in movement factors, you don't have to take the 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 path of least MF. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, let's long put, as, and that's, long I'll, I'll, I'll set up a situation like that because um, technically in, um, in ASL for determining whether you surrender or not, uh, the interdiction hex, let's say there, your entire path has to be free of interdiction. So if you could go certain hexes and then the last hex would be interdicted to where you need to go, if that was the only place you could go, um, 
and you had to move away from the unit or whatever for whatever reason, then it gets kind of awkward and confusing in terms of ASL. There could be certain situations in ASL where the fifth hex you moved into would cause, and you have to move in that hex, would cause interdiction, then you would surrender. But we won't cover that at all. It's just one of those AS, that's the, um, yeah, that's the level that. of difficulty that ASL brings that ASL, I think, likes to cut out of the rule book, which uh, that's one of those uh, particular rules that's that's pretty good. But let's take let's take an example of like uh, what Mark was 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 talking about. Let's um, uh, let's see. Let's let's try an example here. Let's see. Let me go to. Oh uh, yeah, this might be a good one. Let's say uh ah uh, even though even so let's go to where's the, where's that where's that little uh, there we go we'll take this bad boy right here okay we'll take this bad boy right here right this is a good example of what Mark was talking about uh and um you don't see it a lot but this this is a situation that could occur so these guys are just over here. So you have the game situation here where the Americans are broken here and the enemy units um, are right here uh, for the Russians. So uh, let's assume that DD5 is... Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. That's our situation. Okay. So where... Where is the close? Where would the, this target's destination or destinations be that he could choose from? Someone other than Mark. Someone other than Mark chime in on this one. Mark's pretty damn sharp. He's pretty good. Okay. Are there any other destinations that the American unit could route to legally? You could just double click on the FF6 if it's no or whatever. Okay, uh, that's correct. FF six is his uh, uh, is the um, closest destination. So um, I'll go in the rule book later. But let's take for Mark's example of um, so you say, Stu, that's like one, two, three, four, and uh, what about this one here? That's one, two, three, four, right? So they're both four MF away, but one uses an illegal path, EE8. You cannot even move adjacent to that particular unit. And that was um, that was a wording issue in the SLSK1 rulebook uh, for many, many years. And um, it makes a difference in, um, in how you route. So that one is the same distance away from this unit here, from this, well, the, the hex there. But because you have to route through EE8 in terms of determining the shortest route that is not a viable location for this unit to path so you have to choose viable locations for this unit to path through and um there we go so someone uh you either say it or click on the map what path this unit can take to ff6 right are there other paths that that unit could take No. Okay. Let's check this out. Um, like when Mark was going, it's kind, of, it's kind of a loaded question because Mark kind of posed it. So this is the nearest location in one, two, three, four, correct? So he has to go four MF to get to that location. But you do not have to take the shortest route to get there. And why did I switch these units out? It kind of probably gave you a clue. So this unit could obviously go here. He could low crawl there. That's a legal. That's a legal option you have. You may low crawl right there, which a lot of players do. Nothing wrong with that. Then you may proceed to EE8, take an interdiction check, obviously, because you can't low crawl two hexes. You may get only low crawl one adjacent hex, and then take an interdiction check, uh, take a morale check. He passes, and then he goes to his destination. Now, and this is where the rule comes involved, and this is where. It doesn't happen all the time, but in this sort of situation, it does occur. This unit has to go to FF6, and you still have to abide by all the rules of not getting closer to an enemy unit, um, 
etc., uh, etc. Et Let's look at this path that he takes. Let's go here to DD7. That's the only hex that he can go to. We all agree to that because everything else is adjacent to an enemy. You can't do that. And then let's proceed to the second Orchard Hex, 2MF, right? Then we could proceed to... Now, he's at three hexes distance from this unit. One, two, three. Then he could proceed to EE6. One, two, three. Then he could proceed to FF6, which still has to be his destination, which is one, two, three away. So those are all legal, legal locations that he can go to. What difference does it make whether we go there or whether we go there? Anyone? Predictions from E9? Yeah, absolutely. If you go the long way, which is legal, you avoid the interdiction from this unit. Whereas if you go here, and this kind of ties into Mark's question before, can you check the interdiction LOSs? But knowing that you can get interdicted here, you might want to scout, hey, can I, can I take a longer route to get there? Uh, most of the time, it, uh, you can't. Most of the time, there won't be wonky situations you can't. In this, because there's usually a lot of terrain around, it's not that big a deal. But in this sort of situation, which is why I changed DD5 to uh, Orchard, which puts these further, which, hold on, which puts these further away in MF. Because otherwise, that'd be one, two, three, four, and that'd be the same distance there. So he could, that's why I changed that. So that, but that allows him to go here, here. Now, once he reaches here, he can't go here. He still has to go here because it's based on his starting location. Even though that's the same distance here, you don't do it on a per hex basis. You do it at where you start. So this is where he needs to go. If he can get there, boom, 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 and then there. He can't go there because that was 5 MF from his location here. Now let's say, let's say this with a situation. Uh, let's get another guy. Okay, uh, I'm just going to check out. Let's say uh, that's pre. Let's let's just put him here. That might be that might be clear off. So he, uh, well, I want him out of LOS is what I want. That's LOS. Okay, we'll go back there. So he's out of LOS, right? His destination is still FF6, right? His destination is still FF6. And he can still take this route and this route and get interdicted. And then he can go here as well. And then and then what happens? He has reached his destination. Now what happens? That took 4MF. Well, now he's now he's adjacent to a unit he can now suddenly see. So he's gotta he's gotta continue to route Correct. if he can. Now, where can he route to? And at this point is when you can change your destination hex because now it kind of resets his routing scheme. Now he can route to a different location. And the only locations he can route to in nearest MF is this. It's 3 MF away, but he only has 2 MF left. So he would just have to go here, and he can't low crawl that direction. He has to take the interdiction you know, up the yin-yang from this unit. So technically, if you were here and you went here, you would be interdicted by the by the bottom unit, right? Enter this location, say, oh, crap, there's a guy there. I have to leave again, move here, and then he would be able to interdict him as well. But going the other route, knowing that, knowing the omniscient, omni omniscient players that we are, if you go the other route, one, two, on the way to FF6, right? Then at that point, I think, and you could check L West at any time to make sure you're not getting closer to an enemy unit. Steve reminds me of this all the time in our games. It's like, oh no, no, that guy's in, that, that guy's closer. It's like, oh shit, he is. So that looked, I mean, that was a close L West. I mean, the, the building's pretty close, and so you know, uh, uh, that, that's just one that you could check, and you get to check for free. It's like, oh, that guy. Now I can't go to FF six because this bozo here has screwed up my own plans. So at that point, you have to determine a new location from where he is here based on how many route movement factors he has left. So he's expended two to here. Now we have this location, this location, and this location um, within 3MF. 
Right, uh, but he oh, but he can't go to EE5 because he'll end up closer. Uh, he'll correct. end up closer to the unit that he just saw in, in his blind sight. So correct. he can't go to EE5, right? Right, so EE5 is not a potential disc. So he can continue on to DD4 or CC5. So CC5, right. Yeah. One, two, three, and then five, and then theoretically, oh, well, yeah, five. And then if he can't do one here, well, I guess you can do one there theoretically because that's not normal range. But, um, but yeah, but that gets kind of wonky. So yeah, see, uh, so in this case, just by positioning a unit here really makes this unit's path that he could take when he routes really dynamic. You know, if this unit wasn't there, it's, he can, he could go the straight route, right? And take interdiction here, which is viable. And if, if you want to take that route for some reason, um, because let's say you thought a unit was over here that possibly could have interdiction to that site, and say you just want to take the one or whatever, or you just chose to take it that way. Uh, you can go that way. Nothing's wrong with that path. But the safer path would go this way to go to FF6. But notice the difference in paths that you take depending on that unit there. So if you go this route, let's just say, um, let's just say uh, he passes interdiction check or he doesn't have to take one. And then he goes there, then he's pretty much going to be stuck in EE6, right? So because his destination would be EE5, he'll be stuck in EE6 because he can't reach EE5. Uh, but if he took the longer route, go ahead. Uh, did I miss uh, AA7 is out of play? AA7. Um, yeah, AA7 would technically be poor at this yeah, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My orchard, if you orchard that hex too, then I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll orchard that hex too. Yeah, good, good catch. Yep. Let me, let me clue that one. Oops. This is where you got to highlight you guys. Make sure. Yeah, all those guys are. Yeah, that's another orchard too as well. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Actually, um, no, no, no. Doesn't matter. Two, three, four. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, tell me why it doesn't matter. Tell me why that's still legal. Oh, he wouldn't have a legal. He wouldn't have a, the, the nearest legal route path he would have would be five MF, not four. Right. He would have to. He would have to go one, two, three, four, five, and then FF six is still within four. No, it's four hex. Remember the discussion we had. Technically, he it's it's four MF away. No. Yes, it is. It doesn't matter the legal path. It's yes. how far it is. It's one hundred percent matters the legal path because because at that point, uh, the, the 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 reason why it's the legal path is that you can have some really wonky stuff happening in a game where essentially every single hex you move to, you would have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to specify, this is actually a change in the SK4, the, the, the rule book that was posted online at MMP. Right. If you look in that section 3.6, there's a sand, little salmon thing that says along a legal route path. Uh, right. Okay. And that's the yeah, discussion. No, that's the discussion I had yeah. earlier that I actually submitted to them, saying, "Hey, if you, if you read the SK rulebook and you compare it to the squad, the ASL rulebook, the 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 timing of the wording is such that the ASL rulebook has the limitations presented first. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. Abiding by those conditions." you take the closest building or woods in MF. Now in SK, it goes, take the building or woods in closest MF, then avoid all these illegal things. And if you actually work out different route situations, that gets really wonky because theoretically, I mean, theoretically you can have something like like this or or you know just something i mean technically aa7 aa7 is the closest in mf well, actually aa7 bb9 and dd9 are the closest in mf by rule right yep then you would have to try to get to either one of those destinations first by taking a legal path but the problem is there's no legal path here nor here nor here. None of those are legal destinations, but they are closest in MF. And that's where that's where the rule wording falls apart. Is 
even though those are all in the closest NMF, you have to ignore them all because they're not, not legal. And that's why the wording was changed. Whereas this one is legal, this one isn't because he has to, by shorted by the by his path that he has to take, the shortest path, the shortest path in this case is direct. That would be one, two, three, four, which is the same distance in MF over here. But the path that he takes over here can be, this is the shortest path that he could take. The shortest legal path that he takes to A7 would be something like that. Okay. He could go to well, BB6 so, or BB7. You know what I'm going to claim here, don't you? What's that? You know what I'm going to claim? Ignorance of, a, of starter kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah, like I said, it's, um, uh, it's a great, it's a great, great fallback defense. Yeah. Well, it's true. Uh, I've, taught, I've taught my daughter to play a, uh, a, a starter kit, and we've played two scenarios, and she's beaten me both times. So. <laughs> There you go, but um, but yeah, that's a that's a good point to be honest with you in terms of um, because um, if if, uh, if the players don't have SK four, which you know, if if I was if I just owned SK one and two or three or whatever, and uh, the rule wasn't amended at that point, you can only go by what the rule says of the rule book that you have, and so uh, people playing it incorrectly still, um, is would be completely normal from what their from what their understanding of the rule reads and that's how the rule reads in that way but until you put in that extra clause which they had to put in um it drastically changes um the actual path that you have to take by you know specifics of the rule and uh and that the, the, that example here uh you know that that sort of thing here let's see if it was you know something like that Kind of, kind of points it out where all of those locations are the shortest at MF, but he can't go to any of those. And so, what it does, it, 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 it by by having to take the most legal path, is it cuts down all the extra hexes that you have to count to in terms of counting. Oh, is that three hexes or five or six or whatever? You just go, okay, I can't go here, here, or here. So the only place we go to is here. So pretty much you're starting your routing path, you know, from there. To be honest, because you got you have to add that one in, and at that point, you go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. That's the that's an easy way to kind of do it. Uh, in case you can't really kind of picture these things here, it's like, well, I can't go here, here, and here. I can only go here, so you could technically try to determine your route destination from this location because that's the first location you have to go to, and mm -hmm. then and then and then you'd only have this one instead of these others. Although yeah, at the you, beginning. You like you said, Steve, at the beginning, that AA7 is the same distance from FF6, but not through a legal path. And that's the distinction. But that's a good point. That's a very good point. Because some, so, you know, if I, you know, if I have an SK1 that was, uh, what, created 2010 or something like that, or 2014, whenever the hell it was created, um, then, and if I only played SK1, uh, which is fine, because there's a lot of good, fine scenarios in there, um, then uh, you would be playing slightly different some of your routes will turn out slightly wonky so yeah, you brought, brought a really good point i think Stu, in that if one is holding an sk tournament one has to say look we're using this rule right we're using sk4 it's free right we're using the, the yeah. you can't you can't just say all right we're playing this is sk1 and everybody thinks oh that's from the first scenario, first pack no you got to let everybody know that you're playing with the full the full sk4 right yeah. which um um which which is which changes which kind of <clears throat> which kind of devolves to the old squad leader days where as as your further rule books are updated although they could be played into well the squad leader ones couldn't but the sk ones are designed to be played independent of one another is that the um, and this is uh I don't want to bash on MMP too much. This isn't a bash MMP, but all the SK ones they produced here on out should have that amended. All the corrections in SK four should also be amended in all the other rule books as well. Otherwise, um, you will have that situation where you have one player's been playing for four or five years at home SK one and two, and then you know you've got the other players uh, playing that have played SK four or know of the rule change or whatever. And you might get stuck, and um, but that that might be another reason why they released SK4 rulebook free online to download, um, which is unprecedented. In you know, I almost had to double check that. I I didn't believe the guy. It's like, hey, you know, you know, 
so and so, you know, whatever. But uh, I had to double check. So was that correct? That I went right to the site. Like, sure enough, sure as hell, they they've got a free to download. But but, um, but it makes a difference. Obviously, you don't have to play with the armor. They've got all those rules kind of set apart. You don't have to read the hits and armor and and Pacific to still play SK one scenarios with that rulebook. But some things uh, have changed. And like I say. Um, one of the things that I that I discovered through my creation of the videos is that some of the examples, many of the examples in the um, SK two and three rulebook are incorrect, uh, which is bad uh, because uh, what MMP goes by is that examples are the rules versus supplementing the rules. So some examples that you have, I, I, I would advise you reading all the examples in all your rulebooks because MMP's um, doctrine is such that, you know, if it's in the example, it's a rule, but there are times where rules are in examples, but not necessarily written within the body of the text of the rule book, which is, in my opinion, pretty piss poor. Um, because, you know, some people don't like reading examples. Like, okay, I understood that rule, no big deal. And then the example shows that rule, but it throws some side words, wonky, uh, you know, description sort of like what we have, what we have here in determining which way to go. Uh, it will have a description in that rule about where to go. Where I, where my my philosophy is, it needs to be in a rule. The examples should only supplement the rules to better clarify them, not give you new rules, which has been the case in the in the ASL manual with the, the gigantic tome. Um, and I'm not a big fan. I personally am not a big fan of that sort of thing uh it might be just be a default thing saying oh you know it's hard for us to track everything yes it is difficult but um just make the adjustments the whole system was designed to be adjusted and amended but uh that's that's another bone of contention but anyway like i say that in this routing path uh again based on your units right based on your units that you have here uh makes a difference of course if we battle harden this guy actually we need like a regular unit let's get uh, we get four four seven. Let's get let's go on this four. Let's say uh, let's say the Russians and Germans are on the same side, just for whatever reason. We'll just clone this guy not to make it. These guys. Now, obviously, the destination remains the same, right? Oops, the destination remains the same in FF six, and so now it really doesn't matter. Actually, it it does matter. You tell me why. Tell me why it matters. Where whether I go because I'm going to be interdicted to EE seven, right? Because the four six seven can interdict that hex legally. This one cannot because of the hindrances between those locations. Now, if he goes to EE six, he's also going to be interdicted. But what will be the difference of these locations here? You tell me why you would choose this location out of this location or vice versa. What difference? What difference, if any? Since we're going to be interdicted anyway, between the between the locations, what difference, if any, does it make of which location that we go to? Um, well, I mean, if you, I mean, you might choose to go one or the other because if you if your interdiction result results in a pin, you might want to be in one hex over another. Okay. Uh, uh, can you expand upon that more? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly why you'd want to choose why in this particular case you'd choose one over the other, but I mean, it, I mean, if you if you pass if you pass your interdiction by your highest by your you know in the, what is an American unit there? Yeah, uh, yeah. So if you do roll an eight, you're pinned. Um, and I don't. I mean, there might be reasons why you'd want. I don't know that I can't quite figure out. There might be reasons why you'd want to be pinned in one location versus right. another. Great. Okay. And uh, let me let me let me replace the unit uh, with the seven because seven is the most common rule, right? So yeah. let me just replace it with the seven because mathematically it makes a difference with the eight. You can say, well, he's he can make the FF six pretty easily because he's got eight morale because he's going to roll a seven. Let's say you will roll a seven. Which location would you want to be pinned in? Let's say he doesn't break. Let's just say he pins. So this is the situation shows up here, and he pins right here. Uh, uh, it, uh, let's say the next player turn doesn't really matter what happens. Let's say he remains DM, and the same situation applies. Um, 
Now, what does route, route destination does this unit have to take? Let's say he just he's he's fine and dandy. He survived all fire or was ignored. Where where does he have to route to? What are his route destinations? Well, he still has to. He still can only choose to go to FF six. Right, right. Let's but if say. you're in, if, if you're an EE six, then you can choose to go into the woods. Right, and uh, let's say you had a leader in the woods. I don't know where the Germans or the, the, the Ruskies are in this. Oh, here we go. Let's say we had a. Uh, Joseph 351. I wish the thing would scroll, but it doesn't. Let's say Joseph 351 were over here, right? Because he's hiding, because he's, he's like rallying all these broken conscripts, right? Let's say most <laughs> of our forces over here. We may still want to choose the longer destination, anticipating getting pinned right here, right? We may anticipate the pin and and this is the reason why this is a slightly better location than EE7. Because let's say we do get pinned in the interdiction. Let me get it. Uh, it's right here. Nope. Oh, come on. Where is it? The pins on the left. That's square. I'll just cut it out from there. Let's say he gets pinned from interdiction at that location. Okay. Pin comes off at the end of close combat. And just like Mark says, now. Where's his route destination? It can't be FF6. Well, it could be FF6 because it's the same distance from this unit. He could choose that location because it's the same distance for EE5. But he could also choose to ignore it, even if EE5 were an orchard, because it's no further from this unit. But let's just take that one there. But um, let's just say the orchard's over here. So... Uh, Let's say he has two locations. He doesn't want to route here. Now he has the option, like Mark pointed out, of going through the woods back to his leader or wherever he might want to go, depending on whose turn it is. So um, so he could actually make it back to the leader, whereas if he went to route it to EE7 and got pinned, even though FF6 was his same destination, again, selecting the route you take there can make a big difference based upon future routing that you may have to conduct you know and that's what you want to think about is not where you have to go immediately right now if you're given a choice try to decide does it really make a difference or might there be an advantage of one over the other is it a just barely slight advantage sure you have to roll the seven you got to be pinned you got to make sure they don't blast you next turn but let's assume we're getting pinned. You're going to go to FF6 regardless. But if if you don't want to be pinned in one of those in one of those hexes, you definitely want to be pinned in EE6 over EE7. And in and any and any number of combinations. First of all, um, if you're pinned in EE7, EE7, a you're closer to the enemy units, and therefore, uh, let's say let's see these guys are out of LOS, and the Germans turn the Germans can just do this sort of wonky thing to you right just surround you because that's you know one two three four that's easy for him to get to and then you're just you're just dead right but if you were to be pinned in this location he could kind of do the same thing but it takes him further away from his location so he has to extend his force further and then these guys can do like an assault move and then jump you later they're more exposed at that point so it kind of makes a difference of what the german might be wanting to do uh, but you could see the difference that this, just in terms of where this unit can go next time. So you don't necessarily only want to think about the first rally phase you go to, but the next rally phase. Because let's say let's say he goes to FF6 and he loses the DM, and these German units fire on him again. Now he has to route again. So and uh, and we can get into that as well. Uh, that sort of kind of ties into. Um, if a unit were right here, and let's say the Germans fired on him and broke him, do you just want to stop right there and say, okay, that's legal, I'm done? You know, um, I don't, I, I'm done, I don't have to route legally anymore. But sure, everyone wants to route kind of away from them. Now they can't fire on them next turn. The same sort of concept applies. You're just taking it to the next route phase. Uh, next route phase. Here you want to, here you want to avoid the shot and the re-DM. The interdiction here is what you want to, if you get pinned, 
And it's pretty likely that you roll a seven. Let's see. Uh, not, no seven there. There's a seven. There's a seven. So we roll our seven and we get pinned there. Now you're in a better position, assuming you survive other stuff, to get further away from the enemy to safety. So even though, uh, yeah, I guess it's like this. Sorry about that. Even though, you know, it's kind of taken that simple route example, you know, one, two, three, four, the simple route destination, you know, there's lots of different things to consider. Again, like Steve pointed out, the, this one's four as well, but that's an illegal hex. Um, and so therefore we have to go up through here. But going there, we don't have to take the shortest route. We could take a longer route to get there, you know. So obviously, like, if, if the orchard were up here, you can't go up there and then come back down because then you'll be getting closer. That would be an illegal route. Like, if the building were an FF7, you couldn't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because then you'll be coming closer to an enemy unit. That would be an illegal route. You'd have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 directly, and you'd be stuck, you know, in that case. So, uh, you know, give, like I say, given the, given the simple implications of route, don't don't take route phase as a oh my units are broken i'm just going to go to the nearest building or woods there's lots of things that come into the route phase that could give you an advantage and put your units in a better situation for you to be able to rally them and get them back into the fight because when anytime i see a broken unit i i want to gobble that thing alive i want to cut its route path I want to I want to encircle it. I want to do whatever I can to get a free elimination on because in in, in, in in ASL, it's actually really hard to straight up kill units unless you have a gigantic firepower column. It's really hard to kill units. I mean, you look at the chart. You need a leadership modifiers. They got to be moving in the open or whatever. And most of us don't move in the open. We go in the woods. We go behind orchards. We do whatever to avoid those bad modifiers or those negative modifiers to keep us alive. And uh, therefore, you have to get super lucky, which happens, but most of the time you're just gonna break, most of the time. And so, um, so knowing that, that dealing with your broken units and giving them the best advantage of survival should be what you're looking at. You know, obviously you wanna rally them, but that's further on. And you know, you, typically, you know, anytime this guy's DM'd, I mean, self rally, yeah, it's super low. It's possible, but we always want to try to get him to a leader, right? You know, we always want to try and get him to a leader uh, to to be able to get him back in the fight, and then and then uh, help us win the game. So um, that that was a pretty good example, and uh, and again, that's that's like that's like the discussion we like to have because there's lots of different things. Um, that you have to look at and uh some of them in the asl are very subtle some of them are very obvious and um but even the obvious ones get past us sometimes like the game steve and i were playing his if he had red 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 movement point factors it's like that, that, that i mean it's red they make it red to make glaring on the obviously but we were so engaged in the game we were just hammering at one another we just kind of forgot it and uh you know that's what happens at asl and that's okay it's okay to forget stuff like that and um and you're not expected to know all that stuff all the time and uh if later on you say oh yeah oh oh you got the red mf oh we gotta we gotta we gotta roll for that next time or something like that or and just and just go along with it and uh don't take it too serious that you that you miss something i mean even let's say even let's say a7 let's say we routed to a7 but we went this route right you know that's a miscue no problem no problem again one of those things you just want to mark down oh that was an illegal route why was that not, why was that an illegal route oh because of this jot that down or do whatever you do to try to remember things better and um you'll you'll uh you'll chisel your game out you'll chisel that block of stone out and make it a little more cleaner asl image coming in and uh that's fine to do that, which is, I mean, it's fine to make mistakes like that. And he goes over here. Honestly, both locations are still far away from his leader. He really didn't gain anything from it, per se. But that's beside the point. The point is, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make them often. You know, the whole point of playing a game and playing uh, a, an opponent that will roll with the punches with you is that um, you're both learning at the same time. 
and um, that you're having good discussion over uh, over what your what 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 your you know the concepts that you're covering are because it's not easy. I mean, I've been playing uh, uh, that other that other tactical system, and I, I haven't even read the rules, and I'm just going by the digital online thing, and I can pretty much play the game without even reading the rules. Well, that that doesn't happen with AF, ASLSK. You you can't really play it without reading the rules. Obviously, there are some things you're not going to know, but you can learn them quite easily in some other games. Whereas in ASL, and like I said, just in terms of this routing example of going to EE6, there are other circumstances you have to take into consideration um, of where you want to route. Again, nothing's wrong with E5. Absolutely nothing's wrong. Well, nothing's wrong with E7. You know, you can take that route legally, and that's fine. You can take the interdiction, uh, in either hex, but just know that you know. Let's say if you get stuck here, now you could ignore FF6 in the next turn if you survive, and and you just hope to survive. Um, little things like that aren't written in the rules. You're not going to find that in a rule book. You just it, it's it, it, a lot of that stuff's kind of hidden. Uh, you know, it says you know take the uh, your destination is the shortest in MF, but you don't have to take the shortest route. That's kind of a clue saying that you could do some wonky ass stuff and still follow the rule. Um, so that's one of those wonky ass things. Like um, uh, another perfect example is a K result on your chart, K1. Rule book says, okay, um, you casually reduce the unit that was affected, and then uh, the. Multi-man counter, you know, the remaining multi-man counter uh, that was just reduced has to take the one morale check, right? Well, uh, you'll see often, about every two or three months, someone says, does a leader have to take that one morale check? Well, the answer is no, because the rule says the remaining or just reduced multi-man counter takes the morale check. So therefore, by virtue of the leader being a single-man counter, which isn't specifically stated in the rule excludes him or exempts him from taking that one morale check now everyone else has to take a one morale check in the hex but not the the k leader the leader just takes the casualty check and that's a that's a common question that is often asked and uh again it's it's not crystal clear but when you just kind of like melt it down to the basics and you just read the rule for what it says that's what you kind of have to go by when you're playing ASL or ASL SK for that matter. Uh, burn it down to what the rule actually says, and then you'll say, "Oh yeah, yeah, it does say that." Okay, that makes that makes sense now. It kind of clears it up, you know. Um, obviously, there's there's really some confusing sections of the rules. Uh, that's kind of why we're here um, and getting stuff done to kind of iron your game out a little bit, or to uh, either clarify things or to uh, again, I'm not an expert on it, but I know certain I know certain things. Uh, I, I like to think that I know the basics, and pretty much ASLSK is, is ASL basics. And um, but that's the game. Um, I mean, ASLSK, the core of ASLSK is you know the prep the, the prep fire or the defensive movement phase and defensive fire phase. Pretty much is ASL. You know, if you can understand things happening in those two phases which is a lot. It's only two phases at a turn. It's a lot of things can happen in those two phases. Once you can know what you can and cannot do in those two phases, um, you got you pretty much got it down pat. The rest of the stuff kind of just kind of falls into place. It's like it's like taking your puzzle of your puzzle, you start off with the edge pieces. Once you got the edge pieces, now you know the confines of what you can work with and then you just build inwards. You know, Rally phase, there's a couple wonky things that can happen in the rally phase, but not too much. Short rule, short phase, short rule section. Prep fires, pretty standard, right? You fire units, you drop smoke. Uh, no, you drop smoke in the move, but you pretty much just fire units in the prep fire phase. Uh, you could fire smoke from ordnance, but we're only dealing with kind of dealing with SK1 right now. Um, but, you know, as you build on the basic foundations, uh, basic concepts of moving, and defensive first firing and the defensive fire phase, which kind of meld together, which is another concept that everyone gets confused, even I do. 
um, about, you know, is he talking about this phase or that phase? And uh, that's where you just, you know, kind of reread the rules and refresh yourself on that and say, okay, you know, this is still how I remember it and we're, we're going to play it this way. Um, you know, advanced fire, pretty simple. You know, uh, route phase, not simple, but very, very important. Um, uh, mastering the route phase and uh, is also another thing you should do. Uh, probably this should be the second thing that you do. Uh, obviously, firing and defensive fire is, is 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 I think is paramount. When when to defensive fire, first fire, when not to defensive first fire, is a big big part of being successful. And uh, learning uh, learning key route paths and what you want to do uh, to to route and uh, routing doesn't start in the route phase. And this is one concept I I, I wanted to point out, and I, I'm kind of kind of glad I kind of rolled around to it. Routing does not start in the route phase. Routing starts in the movement phase. And why do you think I say that? Why do I say that? It's because when you move, you're going to end up breaking. And when you end up breaking, then you have to end up routing, more than likely. So if we're just charging units haphazardly, what that might do... Um, Let's say let's say this is the, the situation here, right? And we have our leader back in the, our exalted leader back here, right? Let's say uh, we're just charging this location, and let's say oh we're gonna go over here first, and then we're gonna go over here, and then we're gonna go here. We're gonna move there three. This unit's just gonna move two. This unit's gonna move two, uh, four, you know, and then we're gonna kind of kind of kind of branch out on them or something like that. That might be a, might be a viable strategy, but um taking into consideration your unit capabilities and unit strengths we have see crappy unit right 426 527 crappy you know sh very very short range you see you see the problems we're facing right here there are multitudinous problems with this particular mood there are some advantages that you might think of but there are some problems with this move as well one is your weakest unit is closest to his one of his one of his units so it doesn't really matter what his morale is he's going to fire up on you most likely break you and you're going to have to route initially to right there so you're probably going to go if he breaks he's going to go he has to go two and then probably four six you know theoretically you just want to route the hell away from this guy because then he'll just stay on you this guy here if he breaks there okay that's our nearest terrain again that's the same situation we had before one, two, three, four, right? Or he could just low crawl. The well, see, low crawl. That's another thing. You have to move towards the destination. I think a low crawl, you probably have to move right there. But let's just see. He breaks, and let's say, say, he 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 doesn't have to route. And this guy over here, if he breaks, you know, he's just out of the picture. Who can who can who can the leader help? Let let let's see. For instance, the leader kind of moved up here with this guy. Who can the leader really help? He can only really help this unit if he routes back here. These guys are shit out of luck. They're just too far away from the leader. Whereas if you kind of kept them together, if you kind of advance them, and you'll see this a lot in a lot of games. Uh, I have a pro I have this. Pro this is the problem that I have. I like to do wonky stuff and really spread my attack out, and you know, and do this. And this is exactly what I would do. Uh, is it right? No, nah, it kind of looks cool. You know, it's kind of like, you know, cinema, cinematically, you know, they're, they're developing things like that. But um, you need to take into consideration of if these guys break, where are they going to go? How are we going to help them to get them out next turn? Whereas if they if they were to uh, move up, uh, you know, together, or let's say if they moved in this direction, let's say the leader moved over here. Now, now if any one of these guys break, or if, m if more than one of them breaks... Let's say uh, let's say this guy here breaks here, and this guy here breaks, right? So that could be one of the destination. This could also be a destination for this unit, but we could choose this one as well because it's the same distance. Let's say we successfully route to that location for whatever. Let's say this unit like breaks or whatever for something else, and we could route there without interdiction. Now we have a unit, maybe not in the best position, but he can cover. This guy trying to do something special and trying to want to blast these guys later. This guy's in a covering position for these units here that they could try to rally you later. 
Uh, so instead of being spread out and crazy, you know, and being broken in four different directions, now your entire force is pretty much disjointed. Whereas um, if you can kind of focus your attack and know where those units will have to route if they break, then you can leave yourself in a better position to come back from any miscues. And uh, yes, you, you could, you, that, is, that is completely viable in just charging them forward and putting the pressure on and things like that. I mean, that is possible. But know that if you get screwed, if you screw the pooch, even if this leader moves over here, if you screw the pooch, even if, if this is the situation, both of these guys could possibly route back here. But this guy is going to be, he's going to be on his own. And so he, that essentially you just lost a third of your force, especially if he's a conscript. He's going to be, even if he didn't have the DM, it's going to be tough to self rally this guy. You know, uh, when I played Joseph 351, I had the exact same problem. My guys were broken. They had the ability to self rally because that's a scenario special rule in that particular scenario. It was still a problem. Even when they could self rally, it was still a big problem in getting these guys up and going. Uh, so that was. Um, that's pretty interesting. So the routing, okay, long-winded. Routing begins in the movement phase. It doesn't begin in the route phase. You have to take into consideration where your units can successfully and safely route to, to a leader or effective cover that can they can get out of harm's way in the movement phase. And um, uh, as a matter of fact, I saw a particular situation uh, in, in an ASL game where a person did just that. He kind of overstretched his bounds. Let's say, for instance, um, I don't know if I have, how I've got to portray it on this particular map. Oh, let's, let's just go with something like this. Um, let's say we have Germans. Let's say we have Germans like right here. Um, the particular maneuver the, the person did was um, instead of moving, let's say he's trying to get closer to this German unit over here. Instead of moving here, which if broken, could then retreat back to here in his route phase legally, the person decided to go here, which is the same distance from FF6, right? Well, that completely changes his route destination. Actually, it doesn't. It remains the same as we covered before. Um, because that's 4MF and that's 3. But but there again, he would have to take an interdiction, where if he's here, he wouldn't take that interdiction. But uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to portray the, the instance where the guy was in the board edge. So the guy kind of moved like this, and this was kind of like the board edge. And you had a woods. Let me, let me find the woods. Uh, they don't have a woods. But, um, but let me put it right here. So in this instance... In the, in the back corner over here, instead of kind of taking the unit on frontal this way, and therefore have this and this as a route destination, he chose to go here and then here, and then subsequently, when this unit first fired on him, broke him because, you know, point blank shots kind of do that sort of thing to you. And now, he's restricted his destination where he can go. He can only go here, and what do you think the German will do next turn in his in his movement phase, if he has, if if he's safe to do so, he's most likely just going to a assault move there or whatever. This guy dies for free. You know, uh, in this case, it's he's kind of stuck on the edge too. In this case, it takes the German further away of what his defensive position was, especially if you're having like other other Germans or other Russians, you know, moving in this part of the map. If the German wants to kind of fall back. He doesn't want to push him forward just to kill one unit. Now these guys just branch down and continue to be moving to the right while this unit really can't do anything. But if he comes down here, he could still he's still the, it's a better position for the German. So don't put yourself in a position where you only have a restricted spot that you have to rally to uh, or route to. Again, thinking ahead, should I go here then here? Or should I go the entire way to Z9? You know, it looks very similar. The, the, the threat looks very similar in both cases. 
Hold on, let me let me let me take my dog out. She's kind of so I'm just gonna throw out the door. That's all. So, um, you know, entering those positions uh, can pose quite a problem. Now, something like this would be a lot less problematic, right? Even if he did break this unit, that would be okay. And that's where you need to evaluate your moves as they, as they occur. Because even if this unit is extremely restricted in going to Z10, that's fine. Because he has two buddies right here that are going to prevent this German unit from just going here. That's that's just not going to happen because he's going to get blasted. So the German unit in that case is going to forego Z9, more than likely. You know, he's, he's in dire straits. He needs to get out of dodge. He might assault move and then advance phase back here. He may even fire on him. No big deal in the advance phase or whatever, but that's fine. This unit is safe because he's got other units flanking him in that position. But that's completely different than something like this and him breaking. The German has a giant advantage in that. Whereas here, he has an okay advantage because obviously the unit can go to either location. But um, this location's a little further away. It might, it might pull the German out of his safe zone, out of his safe spot, what the German wants to do. But, uh, but again, moving units like this, that would be okay. Even though... That unit is in the exact same position as we didn't want him before, but the situation has changed. And again, that's part of conducting your movement phase, is um, is knowing where your units want to be. They may not all get there, and we all know that. Uh, they may not get there in the long run, but uh, knowing where you're going to end up breaking and having to route. You know, even in this situation, this 527, if he breaks, he's got to go this way. 426 gotta go this way. This guy, he has an option of here or oops, here or here. Oops. Uh, I'm so used to the other interface. Sorry about that. So um again, uh don't think of those don't think as routing as occurring during the route phase. Think of routing as occurring and being part of the movement phase. And you can see things happening before they actually happen. And uh Let's say, um, for whatever reason, <clears throat> let's say for whatever reason, and this, and you could do this as well. You can actually position yourself in a crappy spot, right, and then have the ability to route the what what people call as route forward to where you kind of wanted to go in the first place, right? Um, uh, how do we picture? How do we put that out? Let's say. Yeah, let's say uh, we'll take it down here. We'll take the same units down here. And uh, the Ruskies want to go to the left. Uh, the Ruskies are right here. And they want to make it to the hill or past the hill. Let's just say we have a like a German right here or something like that, right? And we got these bad boys coming out. We advance, we, we assault move, we assault move. And this guy says, oh, screw it. I'm just going to go for it. He's going to go one, two... Uh, like let's just say three, or let's say he move, makes he was started here goes one two three right. He's kind of out in the middle of no man's land right. So, what does that do? Let's say there's a leader. Let's say you got a flanking leader. That could actually help. Uh, let's say this leader's kind of like over in this section over here. Let me get rid of this. Let's say he's over in this general vicinity right, and um. In this case, you kind of want to push units forward. So if he breaks, right, he's got one, two, three, four, five to the nearest location, or five here as well, or one, two, three, four, right? So in this case, he essentially will be able to route forward. And he got obviously continue to go six here as well if he wanted to. But he could technically route forward from that location, especially 
since it's the Russians player's turn, right? Let's say this unit breaks. Okay? Let's say that unit breaks from the Russians' advance fire. And this unit breaks from the Germans' defensive fire. While the Russians get the rally fir route first, in this case, you are in a position to deny the Germans from routing in that location. Now, this guy can't route closer to an enemy unit. He can't route here because that's getting closer to him. The only place that he could go is up and away. Nothing's within 6 MF. Let's say the leader made it over here for whatever reason. So the only route loop destination he has doesn't exist, right? There's nothing within 6 MF. Oop, I think I deleted it. There's nothing within 6 MF. Oh, god dang it. Break. There's nothing within 6 MF for this unit to go to other than perhaps over here. But can he even get there? Let's see. That'd be He'd have to stay 2 by 1, 2, 5. That's not even within 6 MF. So he couldn't even choose that as a destination. Obviously, he can't choose D2, too. So, so nothing else is within 6 MF. So for all intents and purposes, he could route wherever he wanted to within 6 MF. So he could just low crawl there if he wanted to. Or go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or he could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You know, wherever he wanted to. But uh, putting your units into a position where they could potentially route forward, especially when it's your turn, can really change the dynamic of the game. Let's say he broke there. Let's say he just moved them up together in a clump right there. Let's say he broke there. Um, because you knew that the German would take the easy shot. Now the German can route back to this location closer to where he needs to defend. Let's say he's defending this for some reason. Or this is where a copse of trees like this over here. Then he's still in a position where he's still in your way. You know, when it comes to your next turn, you really can't move there and take advantage of the cover. You have to move there, force him, and then advance in and be exposed to fire. Whereas if he wasn't there at all, you could possibly get there and have the cover. So forcing the enemy to route where he doesn't want to route is another part of your movement phase. Especially if you're going to, you know, punch him in the face. If you've got a bunch of units and you're going to have good firepower. Um, that you can really, you know, put a detrimental, you know, that, in that case that would be really bad. But let's leave it as that. So, again, <coughs> think of routing situations, not only for yourself, but also for the enemy units during your movement phase. And that's why movement is so important. Uh, other than just, you know, prepping and not being able to move, moving is so important because you can, you can damage the enemy's defenses simply by a maneuver like this. Even if you don't, even if your result just results in a break or say something else broke him or whatever, then um, it really creates a different dynamic for the for the German player. Now his unit's going to be stuck while your unit's going to be super safe. So, uh, very weird concepts, but just something to think about. I don't know if you guys have been thinking about that in your games, um, but um, I think using some of those uh, techniques or um, positionings can make a big difference in some of your games, especially uh, especially a lot of the SK games, because most of them are on, on a single board, right? Single board or half board or two half boards, something like that. And um, a lot of times you don't have a lot of, you know, free places that you can move to. And uh, even moving one unit, what's a half squad or even a leader, can really make a difference when you break the enemy unit or make him retreat or whatever. In terms of routing if you deny route destinations then you're controlling the map and that's pretty much what asl is all about is you being able to control the map uh, for your own purposes so um, that's kind of long-winded but um i just wanted to make sure i want to cover that in certain certain situations that we can see on the map does anyone have any questions at this point or any other comments or anything else they want to go over before we kind of, kind of, I kind of didn't want to make the session go forever, but. I've got a question. All right, John. Um, how much of that, or let's say I'm the defensive player, 
I assume you're also taking that to account. So if my opponent's moving against me, where I fire at him in defensive first fire, how much of where he's going to end up having the route to is played into that? Um, you're in the room, John, right? Uh, this is Robert. Oh, Ro- oh sorry, sorry, Robert. Sorry, Robert. Uh, Mr. B, is that right? Is that okay? So, um, uh, show me, show me what you're, show me exactly what you're doing here, and this is why I, uh, every, I want ever give me, give me the situation on the on the board. I don't quite understand. I want to be able to. Okay, I guess, let's say, uh, I guess I can move these counters. Yeah, so move too- anything you want. Do anything you want. Put anybody yeah, on there. Tanks or take, whatever. Take it five two seven. Let's say that. The DM off of that. Oh. German. How do I take the DM off of that? Uh, DM. So, uh, you can just remove. Uh, you can just drag it. Just, just drag it and throw it on the side if you want, or you can just remove okay. all DMs on the top. Let's unbreak him. Yeah, I just click right, right, right click, and then break him again, and then we'll, that we're all in. There you go. Okay, so question: If I can, let's, let's say I had a five two seven here, or how much of taking into account what you said as far as okay, I've got a move, I've got a unit, enemy unit moving towards me. Okay. What am I as to when I'm going to fire on him? Based on where he can route to at the time. Oh right, right. Yeah, that, that does make a difference, right? Turning that, turning the tactics around to where, because I know, like, I'll watch a lot of games where people are playing, and I don't really get to why. Like, sometimes they'll wait to a certain point to sense of fire, which, which to me it seems just like I said, I'm I'm new. The further away that you shoot at him for defense first fire you more advantage or more opportunity to fire subsequent first fire right i'll right. see some people wait till where the counter is closer so that's just my curiosity was is that somebody taking into account that if this if he's in a different location it, his routing will be messed up you know what i'm saying right absolutely and i think that's a very advanced question because that goes um that that that's that's a really good question and if you could think of that as you're going if you anticipate where he needs to go or where where you think he wants to go um then that that has a big impact on where you want to fire him at um let's say and, and, and like you say before do you want to fire him at at a longer range you want to fire at him right here to make to to make sure let's say let's say he had a bunch of units um let's say he was just right there now he didn't any other units we won't put out anymore i won't add more to your question let's say what's the difference of firing here and firing here and you pointed it out you're at half fire power right here right so you're less likely to hurt him so it means he pretty much gets a free move or if he wants to move here then you can't even subsequent first fire on him again right so um if if he moves here you forego firing if he moves here, then you have the opportunity to fire full firepower. And um, right there, in terms of routing, uh, the destination changes from this place to this place, right? So when he is in W5 or W3, he can go to U2 or V1 directly, right? So if he has leader further back, uh, let me grab a leader real quick, just so we have a visual. Oh, come on, Germans. Where are you, baby? <clears throat> there we go. I wish it would scroll the map. It doesn't. Or maybe I don't have it selected. So let's see. He has a leader back here. Uh, oh, well, it's his turn. Well, it's his turn anyway. Uh, but he wants to keep him back there. If you wait, if you fire on him here and you break him, which is fine. Nothing's wrong with that shot. Uh, I would anticipate him moving here than going here because that's orchard and it's at a long range. But here's a good shot. Let's say he breaks. So he can go here or here. So he could route here. And that's not interdiction, right? 
Right, because it's out of normal range. Right, out of normal range for this unit, absolutely. And well, there's no other units in the, uh, in our situation, so that's he could route freely, and then he could route two, three, four, five, and then this guy could advance onto him next turn, right? But let's say he he had, let's say he had already moved the leader, which is an even better example. That way we ignore some of it. And this guy's moving, and you break him here. Let's say you anticipate anticipate him moving here, and he does so, or he does here, whatever like that. You break him here, especially if you know he's going to move there. Let's say he just wants to jump on you and just kill you. Um, so he's broken, and that makes a big difference, right? That one hex makes a difference for you, um, because now he has to go. Now he can go either here or here, right? Well, nine times out of ten, he's probably not going to go here, right? First of all, he's going to take interdiction in X one because he's in normal range to your unit and then he goes right here that is a legal location for him to go to he could also go to v1 which is no interdiction and then reaches his destination and then he may continue but because he's one hex closer right and let's again he already moved he goes one two three four five and even if he advances he can't get to him so yes, you're absolutely 100% correct. Deciding where to fire on him, whether or not he's broken or not, can make a big difference. Can make a real big difference of where it's going. And especially like, let's say you anticipated him going here. That's fine, don't first fire on him. You could fire on him here, same half firepower, right? You're still at two minus one, right? Non-assault movement and the first fire moving in the open doesn't apply because he's in He's in uh, an orchard hex, right? And he's not using a road movement. So he's, he's in an orchard hex. So you're going to get a two minus one shot on. Not horrible. And let's say he breaks here. And uh, how, does, how, does it, how does the situation change there? Well, he can't route here. That all automatically excludes that location. Um, again, that's a poor location for him to go to, but situations may deem that necessary. And it also makes him further away from his leader over here which again if you anticipate him breaking him his leader can't get to him there either because then he still has to go you know this or this is a is the destination he'd have to go to still one two three four five six well at that point yeah he's actually further away and then he could actually advance on him right there so that makes a big difference yeah so right there or right there makes a big difference so if he's here he can go one Two, three, four, five, and see that's 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 actually kind of nice. I just kind of saw that, Robert. Is you think here and here is the same, right? Here actually gives the unit an opportunity to get rallied next turn. Here doesn't give him that opportunity to get rallied because he has to expend the one, three, five versus the one, two, four, six. So even though they look similar and even though this is a crappier shot you know this allows him to go back to the leader this is a better shot but it prevents him from getting back to the leader you know assuming you know where he's going to go you know um you know if this was like a blocking terrain for whatever reason if that was the board edge and he had to go this way you know then you could choose that but um but yeah um uh definitely and let's say let's say you knew he would go to as good as he's going to go to Z three anyway. Let's say you don't fire him at all. You wait until he goes here. You even take the hindrance because you know if you break him here, he's really stuck, right? Right. That he's 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 really in a in the doghouse because then he's got to go, you know, he's got to go dearest in MF, which would be one two three four five. Actually, he can go here one two three four five. That would be the nearest MF. And then he'd be stuck right here. He could still stay at two hexes from you. Take interdiction here, but here. But again, uh, in that sort of thing there, he could actually go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that would be legal because that's still his destination X and still avoid the interdiction like we did over here on this other side to FF6. You know, he doesn't have to take that direct straight shot there and that's that's a perfect instance where you would want to take a longer route and reach your destination. It's rather that happens because sometimes there's like a woods there, but 
But in this case situation, it's completely viable. But there again, waiting for him to get the Z3, you know, if you if you have a good chance of breaking him, or if you think you could break him there, he's 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 gonna be stuck in V1. And guess what happens then, right? If he's stuck in V1, if that's the only place that he can reach, the next turn, let's say he loses his DM, right? The next turn, you could then fire on him again, DM him again. And that way, he's one more turn out, because then this guy's going to be essentially trying to move up there later on to rally him. And that will send him further in the back. Sure, he'll be able to get to his leader then, but that's different than the turn that you initially broke him. Now, if you route it here, and let's say that LOS exists, it does look like it's, it's just, let's assume that LOS exists. I think it does. But now that's out of your range. Now you can't even shoot at him. Now he just loses DM for free. And you can't even you can't even scratch this guy until you get within normal range or fire on him again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very good question. Selecting the location where the enemy you think might go to is a very big point. You know, uh, wait till he gets into a spot which puts him in a pickle, puts him in a bind, Robert, and then then you have the you'll have the advantage on him uh, if you can effectively you know obviously break him, and uh, that makes a big big difference too. And that's another th key thing about what they call it fire discipline is if you're just if you just fire in the first unit that that moves, like say he's here, you just fire on him here, you know, that can make a big difference in how your gameplay pulls off because he's just going to rally back. You know, rally him next turn, and then he essentially you haven't done anything. Now he just moves both of them up. Whereas if you pop him here, he's going to be out essentially for your entire turn, and then most you know possibly the Germans' turn if he doesn't the rally. So just one hex or two can make all the difference in in putting yourself in a better position and keeping him out. And uh, you know, uh, like for instance, uh, kind of extrapolating on that, Robert. If you have a unit here, like you say he's broken, you broke him last turn, right? And um, let's say for whatever reason, uh, you don't necessarily want to fire on him, but let's say you want to move your unit, and that's where you can go one, two, three, four, right? Because you want to move this direction, you want to move up to the top. But let's say you just want to go one, two, three, four, and just DM him by simply by moving next to him. You don't even have to fire on him at that point. And that, you know, that gives you another advantage by, by having this unit in a worse position than back here or over here that you can't get to him, you can easily move to him here or you can go one, two, three, four and then like advance here if you needed to, you know, see so he had more guys coming on just to DM him if you didn't want to fire on him for whatever reason. Uh, those those are always, an again, the, the, the gameplay is always an option, optional situation. And, um, and, um, I always like to say, you know, it's it's. I think it's better to watch players play the game than just read uh, the rule book and and just the examples to kind of figure out how to play, because the examples are set up specifically like we have here. I mean, obviously, this is these aren't the only units going to be in the game. You have to take into consideration the three or four other the units that are going to stop you from moving, or that have moved already, or haven't moved already, and all those things come into play. But um, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It makes a difference whether you want to hold. And if you know he's going to move here, you know that that's a that's a strategic decision that you have to make, and um, that could that could that could yield higher results in the long run than just shooting at him straight up. Like in, because most likely you're not going to kill him. You know, two minus two shot. You're probably not going to kill him. You're probably just going to break him. You know, you might get a normal morale check on him. But a two two plus one shot or two even shot is um, is not bad at all. I mean, even if you pin him, you know that's almost a success. At least he stops moving; he can't advance. So, yeah, that's a good question. That's a that's a good point. Let me ask you another question too, because I think I caught you said when, when the unit was then X three, you said that it would be uh, it's not moving in the open because it's in in the orchard right did you say unless it's in road movement uh unless he's using the road movement right let's say let's say he's in t5 and he wants to get that road bonus right all right then um obviously the, the well let, let's let's unbreak him okay let's say you're right here okay and let's say he's using road bonus because he uh let's say he wants to get to x3 right 
and he doesn't want to CX. So he's not CXing or he CX last time or whatever. So he wants to go to X3. That's his destination for the movement phase. So he's got to go one, two, three, four. And the only way for him to get there without CXing is to for the road by using the road the entire way. So therefore, he would be considered in the road. And because you could trace it right down the road hex side, you could penetrate your LOS right through there, right? Then he would be considered moving in open ground. Now, having the same situation apply, say he's in T5. He could legally say, I'm going in the orchard for one, going in the orchard for two, going in the orchard for three, going in the orchard for four, and he's not, quote, on the road because he's using the movement factors of the orchard. Even though he's running along the road, sort of, even though it happens to parallel the road, it's like he's moving, like, on the sides. It, that's what the concept is, versus straight down the road. I mean, if it was a road going through the woods, right. it'd be the same. Right. It's, I'm saying he's using... Can be uh, going through the woods and yeah, using that. Yeah. yeah, like on this side over here. He could either expend one movement factor or two in, in that location. And in this, in, in this instance, he's entering the other terrain. Like if these are woods, you would have to spend two. But the other terrain happens to be one MF just as well. And that's where a lot of players kind of kind of lose focus on that is, whoa, whoa, whoa that's how much the road costs. He can't get, he can't get away with that. Yeah, he can because he's entering the orchard. Because he's just going one orchard, 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 but he doesn't get the one movement factor bonus for staying on the road, the for, for using road essentially the road movement rate. So he could only move four. So if you were back here, and if he didn't want to take that shot, you know, right there, he hit go one, just op either open ground or the road one, and then orchard, 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 two, three, four, and that's all the further he can move. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, or the orchard roads and and uh, stuff like that can be, can be kind of wonky. Yeah, this could be a small point, but actually, uh, Stu, if you, if you start if you start the four six seven back in F six, even if he doesn't, even if he uses the road movement rate for um, for the orchard hex between U five E four and X four, when he moves into T five. He can he can basically say I'm 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 in open ground I'm not in the road. Um, uh, move the unit, move the unit, Mark. Yeah. So so if he, um, so if he moves right here, okay, and you fire, okay. If you're if if he says he's on the road, then you can tra you trace your line of sight right along the road here, and he's considered two minus. So he's considered a minus two, moving in the open. First fire, you know, non movement moving in the open. But if he says instead of using the road, he's using the open ground. Do you get the, we get the minus minus one for moving in the open, or do you have to take all of the orchard hindrances? Uh, open ground. You always chase to the center hot de center dot location, right? Okay. So yeah. yes, in that case, you would still get the minus two moving the open. Okay, right. But as soon as you get the two well, well in, the, in, theoretically, I I, yeah. I don't want to say anything about this, but technically it leaves the road depiction. Oh at yeah. E4. So yeah. at that point, theoretically, uh, I think you would have to count V four as an orchard. But let's say that's straight. Yeah. Let's say that's straight. Um, but yeah, in that case, it would leave the road depiction like right there, right where my cursor is. And therefore, that would be an orchard hex. But let's say it's straight. I understand your point. But yeah, right. he can okay, say open right. ground, open ground or road. The only difference it makes to the unit, the infantry unit, is whether he gets that one movement factor bonus. Right. It doesn't right. matter. What not. Right. So if right. he says, yeah. I'm in open ground, right? And then he goes no. road, 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 because these are like uh, woods, he, right. won't, he won't get it. But, you know, yeah, um, at that point, most of the time, they would just stick on the road because they would they would know the difference. But that's a good question. That's a good question. I, I, Stu, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue with that. Uh, for, for where the guy is in Z Z two, because the rule actually says that um, they do not provide hindrance unless that portion of a line of sight from a fire to target never lead, leaves the confines of the road depiction. Right. You it, do because from Z one or Z two. 
to Y3, you're not on the road. To, is that two to Y3? No, no. Yeah, so, so the, what he's saying is... The, the is firing it's alongside of it. You don't have to be on the road. It's just the target. Like, there's no there's no uh, cover. Because the, Z2, the, it doesn't matter whether where you are. Yeah, it's a, it, it does. It, well, I, I would say it does. It says that any portion of that fire that leaves the road hex, you're not on the road hex when you're firing. Right. The, the, the portion... The portion on the line of fight leaves this road hex right here, on on V four. Uh, but you would you would get that because, I mean, that would, in that in that case, in that case, if you, if you are, let's take the 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 situation on this side, right? If you're if you're moving along here, let's let's use a six six. Let's use this bad boy here because it simply has the range, right? If you're using the road movement right here, that's that's an open ground shot. If 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 you're using the movement right there, that's an open ground shot because it doesn't leave the confines of the road. But you do at the very beginning of the of the of the shot. Right, but I think the confines of the road is based upon your target hex, not your firer's hex. Because that From would... fire to target it says. Well, it says yeah. It does actually. Hindrances do not apply to such hexes if that portion of the line of sight from fire. If that portion. Right. That so portion. That, right. What does that portion mean? That portion is the portion that the line of sight of is being traced through the hex, like the instance we have here. Like if you yeah, fire. It might be through. Yeah, this... it might be considered like through the actual obstacle hexes. Right. So this, if this, if this I unit have... was here. Yeah. He fired on a unit in W4 that was moving using the road movement rate. It doesn't leave the portion of any of the road at all. So if you're using the road, you're, you're on, I trace LOS down the road is what you're doing. That it doesn't even... say the hex. It, I would assume that it would say the, the target hex. Well, right, but... except except uh, if you actually, it says hindrances do not apply to such hexes, such hexes being the orchard road hex. Right. Okay, and so hindrances do not apply if that portion of line of sight never leaves the confines of the road section. Well, so for these two hexes here in, let's say, X3 and, or in, yeah, X3 and W4. W4. So, so as, as the line of sight is going through those two hexes, it, it, through the orchard, these two orchard hexes, it doesn't leave the confine of the road. Now, after that, it, it, it is an open question. But I'm not sure the rule actually says that, so I don't know. I mean, that's a good good question as to whether, from here to here, whether that's considered open open ground or not. Because these four hexes, he says, right, doesn't leave the road depiction. We're, we're obviously we're taking the curve in the road out of the out of the equation here. Wow. But um, you know, as he's tracing through these four orchard road hexes, he doesn't leave the road um, on this line of sight. After that, it's whatever blocks or doesn't block. Right. Well, I, you, yeah, well, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I mean, it says, I mean, I tend to look at it and say such hexes, the such is referring to the actual orchard road hexes, not to anything else. Yeah. And so take, take for instance, um, it's, it's where you can apply the minus one. So theoretically the line of sight that you're tracing, uh, for the minus one to apply the minus one technically has to apply to every hex along the path of fire, right? Your line of fire. Otherwise, like if you're firing, you know, if you're, that's why if you're in open ground and I'm firing here, you are in open ground, right? But my path of fire goes through a hindrance. So therefore that negates that minus one move in the open modifier. This path of fire, well, assuming the, the assuming V4 is straight and doesn't actually block it, that path of fire is still minus one throughout the entire shot. So therefore, you are in open ground in your location, based on the definition of of moving the open and open ground negative one uh, dice roll TEM. Essentially, it's kind of a TEM. It's kind of hard to say it's a TEM because that doesn't apply only if you're moving. So, so the the fire will still be shot on with. Well, let's just move him over here. That will still be a minus one shot. That's going to be a minus one. FFMO, 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 
and the one back here where it actually leaves the confines. This would be the example of it leaving the confines of the road hex, which would then incur the hindrance penalty in V4. So he would be safe to move here using what other, whatever method he wants to. Oh, sorry. You know, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, whatever method he wants to, to enter that location. And then beyond that, all of these would be subject to the line of fire. Just because, just because your your line of fire from here doesn't doesn't coincide, you know, it's it's an open ground location here. It's the minus one is what we're kind of looking at. Just because this doesn't, you know, it would be kind of odd to say like, if I was right here and you moved right here. That the minus one doesn't apply if I'm using the road movement rate, because you can't trace it along through a road hex side. We know that the minus one applies there because simply it's open ground. You know the road movement rate is irrelevant at that point, and that's kind of the concept where you have to be able to apply the minus one pretty much through every single hex you fire through to be able to apply it to your target hex. And right, but, but as I said, yeah, but I think right, but. Uh, hold on, sorry. I'm back to uh, here. We go. Yeah, but technically, right. Since you're since it does leave the road depiction for that brief moment in between V4 and U5, then as this unit technically moves into T5 from let's say S5, he moves into T5. Yeah. Then technically, he does have the orchard. Correct. Right. Okay. And same thing here. Technically, he has the orchard. Yeah. here. Then he does not have the advantage of the orchard unless he chooses. Unless he tells you he's moving in the orchard. Right. I mean, if he tells you he's moving down the road, then 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 you can pop him there right. at minus minus two at six minus two. Right now, one thing you might want to might want to might want to ask is, um, let's say a unit does take that take that uh, method of movement. Let's say he goes one two, right? Um, in my opinion, I mean, you can ask him, are you using the road or not? I mean, I wouldn't say, okay, that's minus two in the open, because you know, he's not going to benefit from the road moon rate, so you can, I would assume that he's not moving using the road, you know, and that's where one of those things comes out. Does he have to say that that he's going in the orchard or not? Um, I don't necessarily know if the rules specifically state that because he's expending one movement factors, which is the same, which is the same terrain. Now, you can ask him, say, are you in the orchard or are you on the road? You know, but you'd have to say that when you enter CC4. If you go one on CC four, if you move from here, you go one. He's sure, obviously then, he's then, obviously then, not in the woods. And at that point, yeah. you, there's no discrepancy. But, yeah, but I suppose yeah, you would have to ask your opponent, you know, yeah. what are you actually doing there? And, yeah. have, and he has to announce it before you decide whether you want to fire or not. Right. And theoretically, if he just goes, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, he should say, you know, I'm going, I'm using the orchard. One, two, three, four. You know. He should state that to so just to make it clear, so you don't have to worry about what units can fire. It makes a smoother game, makes a friendlier game, and and it also keeps in mind for you to know that yes, you better be using the orchard because he's going to blast you, you know, when you get exposed. Could you use the road here? Sure, you're not going to get a bonus from it, but you could certainly use the road. But you're going to get blasted for it. So that that's that's a good distinction there is, and that's just a term of. I don't know if it's etiquette or just clarification for the defender. You just need to clarify what you're doing for the defender um, before you before you before you do that. So it, it it would make sense for the attacking player, the moving player, to say orchard for one, for two, for three, for four. You know, you know, because you know sometimes the orchard road might change into like a woods road or something for whatever reason. And then you would you know, you would say okay now I'm going to the road now I'm going to using the road, you know so well, that's a good that's a good that's a good question it's a good distinction you know again little subtle things that happen during the game which um, can make a big difference you know in terms of fire selection like uh, Robert was saying earlier fire selection and things like that. Well. Um, Unless you guys have any other questions, I think uh, we can cut it at six, well, six thirty. So it's been a while. So um, <clears throat> we could uh, we can cut it here.
And uh, well, it's, it's 9:30 for those of us on the right coast. Oh, uh, the right coast, yeah, yeah. yeah. On, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, so a bunch of leftists out here. Right? All right. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You guys gotta go to bed by time earlier than most of us, so we get to stay up late. We're bad boys on the West Coast. Yeah, and, there you go. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, good questions and uh, you know things to think about that um don't necessarily come come to mind initially. You know what I'm saying? Uh, things like this usually kind of happen the spur of the moment, and that's where everyone does the rules diving. And um, so, uh, uh, like in routing, knowing some of the, the principles of routing. Uh, knowing all that stuff beforehand and knowing the importance of that uh, can actually make everything else move more smoothly for the rest of the game. So, mm. but, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that orchard, that's a crazy orchard. I'll have to remember that if I ever play on this board again. Really yeah, cool. actually, what I'd like to do, yeah, I mean, when I, when I finish this, I think I'll dive into the ASL rule book. I'd like to see if they see, treat orchard roads any differently. Uh, you know, yeah, they, I mean, it's the same. Well, yeah, maybe a slight change in the in the wording of the rule between SK and and well, and ASL. I hate. I just checked that. it. It's yeah. not. It's, it's same? the same wording. Okay. It's exactly. but, I was, but it's interesting. I was just look, I'm just looking at on a Game Squad forum, and there is something that actually addresses what I just said, and it's interesting. It says that uh, it's only if it stays on the road depiction uh, for live site through. He so where is it? It's if you go to Orchard Road, line of sight. On the ASL rulebook or the SK? No, uh, uh, no, it, it, it's Game Squad. The rules read the same. The rules in both SK4 and okay. Squad Leader read the same. Right. Okay. But looking at on Game Squad form, it appears that it says line of sight to an Orchard Road, in an or, or, line of sight in an Orchard Hex, Orchard Road. Hex is clear only if it stays on the road depiction. Right. For line of sight, and it show, gives you an example to uh, through hex EE4, same he same hex elevation is always hindered by the orchard. So that would include FF3, which is on the outside as per your depiction. So I take I, I, I encourage you both to look at that rule. Which or that rule is that? Game squad. Which, what, if which you rule? Search for, Orchard Road line of sight. If you search under Game Squad, right. But um, that which which is fine. But why three is not at Orchard Road? No, 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 no. I'm talking about on another. Uh, they have a board. They, they have a, a depiction of a board on the question. Uh, in Game Squad. Uh, do you know which what rule the rule title is? It, it the it's. Uh, you want? Because I mean, the they've rule. got a big rule section there. B fourteen six. Orchard Road, line of sight. No, like, like, where, where is it, it? Where is it being discussed? Is it the hindrance question by Von Marwitz? Hey, um, actually, can can you dump the link? Can you dump the link into the Discord page? Sure, hold on. Thanks. Is it the hindrance question on the first page or no? Well, hopefully, we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, can I just can I just dump it? I don't. It will click, yeah, on, click on the thing, and it'll have a different link, and just copy the HTML the thingy up there. Uh, yeah, actually. Can I do that? Let's see. What if I just take this in here? No, it didn't do it. You could paste it into the Vassal page, I suppose, in the, in the page we're yeah. looking at in Vassal. Yeah, you can paste it either way. That. You can paste it either yeah, way. Yeah, I can okay. copy paste it out of there. Okay, well, let's see if I can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just when you click on the when you click on the discussion did the, up on up on the H, the the website like address, just copy that whole thing. Yeah, I did. I'm just trying to where to where to. Where it pops. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see here. Uh, can I just paste it here? Can I? Where's the thing? Yeah, I'm not. Control V. Just Control V. Another, another control V should be fine. Oh, I've got, I've got it. Where I'm trying, trying to figure out how to paste it. Control V. Where am I going to paste it? Wherever you want. I'd like to. Yeah, if you just if you just click into the um, just click into the little text window in, in on the Vassal. bottom. Oh, I'm not, okay. I, yeah. you, you can go there, yeah. or you just in the message general right here, and just control you there. Or just or, right, or Discord. Yeah, that either one. Uh, well, I tried to put it in Discord, and, and it won't. And it won't. Okay. Oh. No, it won't. Whereabouts is no? It won't go into general. 
Um, uh, hold on. Oh, it might. Um... <sighs> There we go. There you go. All right. Let me freaking forever to do that. Try try the same thing in the um, general now. Try to try to get in the general. In the general. Yeah. Screen? Try try okay. to paste it in the general again. I I, I checked a setting and it, it, because it's a website address, it might be. You mean like okay? There you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a website address. It, uh, there was a setting in the um, in Discord which disallowed posting of sites. But yeah, yeah, okay. I hope he's got a pick, right? Oh, Jesus, it's so small. Oh, he didn't initially have a pick. A unit in F3 firing through the Orchard Road hex and E4 to C5. Oh, shit. I got to put my password. What? Oh, yeah, I yeah, I had the same problem. I have to go, <laughs> I have to, go to uh, I've got to use. Uh, I just tell it always that that's where I, I just let, let it stay that keep that one. Well, my, 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 my Microsoft uh, Edge has been. Uh, uh, here we go. I'm oh, there's your it. problem you're using Microsoft Edge. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. What but, do you think? You're, what do you think you're doing? Playing lock and load with ASL? Yeah, oh yeah, with ASL exactly. Actually, uh, yeah, I haven't been doing that much at all. So, uh, let's go paste. Okay. Go. Okay. All right. Well, I'm in. Okay. Let's see. What's the question? The unit F three through the Orchard Road hex. In yes, that would be a hindrance. That's a hindrance. Because the road doesn't it doesn't go through the road, that's a hindrance. From F three to C five. Yes, that's a hindrance. What's Be the difference? Because because the orchard is the orchard's inherent terrain for one thing. So theoretically, you have orchards all around. Because it's right you, down the road, it's right down the road. Right, but you're leaving the depiction of the orchard. Because because there's no road exiting, there's no road hex because. The same thing is like, you can't move from E4. Let's say E4 had a road going into F3 that you could use the road movement rate, right? Okay. Okay. Then if you fire from F3 to C5, assuming it doesn't leave the road depiction rate in E4, then it would be down the road. Well, there's no road depiction in E4. So therefore... It's just same it's thing the, from firing from F4. There is a road. Okay, no, okay, I have a question. Okay, I have a question. F4, assuming the wall isn't there. Let's say you have wall advantage in F4, and you yeah. fire at a unit using mo road movement rate in E4. Do you get the orchard and why? No, hold, uh, no, no, no. We're not talking. We're talking about from E from F3. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. F3 to C5 comes right through that orchard hex in E4. Correct. Down you're, the road. You're correct. You're Down correct. the road all the way to C5. Right. Does it leave the There's, road depiction in E4? Uh, does it leave the... No no more than what your road depiction did. No, 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 no. My road depiction is the orchard hex. It has nothing to do with Y3. It has to do with the orchard road hex. Now, does the rule say, does it leave the orchard road hex depiction does it leave the road hex within the orchard road hex the same does reason why v4 creates a hindrance leave the road it doesn't leave the road what e4 if, if, if no I'm f4 in e4, he's an f3 he's 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 an f3 he starts in, he's an f3 firing all the way down to c5 correct that's right down through the wall to to the to the road correct to c5 correct. The gate, right. yeah, right to the gate, yeah. Right, so we're going right. to assume that. And we're going to assume that he's moving up into C5 uh, because that way you can, if, if you can, when you do that, you get you don't have to worry about the wall yeah, or the yeah, gate. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's moving up that. So he gets to C5. If I'm in F3 and I fire... It's hindered. Uh, it's hindered. Yes. What's the... What, would, it, would it be a hindrance if it was in D4? The orchard was in D4? Um, if, if the, uh, I can't trace the LOS on that. If, if that little divot is like the divot we have in V4, it would also be hindered. If it leaves the road depiction. So if it clips that, if it leaves the road 
and you'll see it on both sides of the road in D4. Let's assume D4 straight for whatever reason. Let's say D4 okay. is completely straight, and that's you can. Right. It, so it doesn't question, leave it in yeah. D4. It might leave it in D4. I don't know. You, it, it'll be close. It's obviously going to hit part of that gr open ground, but in E4, it does leave the depiction of the road. That's why okay. you, that E F3 well, to C5 yeah. will be hindered. But you see, in in my sense, as I said, if as as I'm reading that line. Hindrances do not apply to such hexes. So such hexes, meaning the actual orchard road hex. Right. So hindrances don't apply here in E4. If that portion of the line of sight from fire to target, so this portion in the E4 hex, that's my impression of that. Of which would that be the E4 F3 hex side. Right, which would be everything as you're going from F3. So as soon as you cross the hex side into E4, okay, that portion of the line of sight through E4 from F3 to D4, okay, um, never leads the confines of the road depiction. Well, that's an interesting... It does. It does. It, yeah, I suppose it does. But then if it does, then then it, we're back to our original question of D2... Oh, but... Well, no, yeah, I mean, the, difference, the difference there is that Y3, the place where it leaves the depiction, isn't part isn't the orchard hex is it an right? orchard road hex right it's if that orchard was an road. orchard road hex then it would the fire will be hindered the, exactly steve if if oh, y3 oh, wow. if y3 yeah. was an orchard road an orchard okay, road say, hex, oh, let, let me bring right? up this let me bring up the 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 vessel okay oh, yeah. okay so okay so you're saying y3 okay, y3 let me let me let me let me let me yep. make a pretty picture here yep. because we can uh Orchard. Can you make a pretty orchard road hex? Where yep. We're going to make an orchard road hex. We're going to make a pretty yep. picture. Yep. And, oh, these are bridges. These are not roads. What the hell? Uh, I, I think I, I yeah. There I think you go. I see, Got it. Right here. Yeah, the subtlety of the two, two differences here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. really, oh, that's very pretty. All right. Is that shot hindered to Y4? Yes, that I would yeah. say. The same thing yeah. is E4. Exactly the same problem. It's exactly the same issue. Right, but because Y three on our on the map on Y three on our map is not an orchard, it's a it's an, it's a road hex, not an orchard road yeah. hex. The question that's is an orchard road hex. By the line of sight, that's why that's why it's open ground there. Right. Because Y like, three is not an orchard. Again, the concept of, of you you having to you essentially you have to apply. The move in the open modifier to every hex along the fire the, the line of fire because otherwise it's hindered right otherwise it's hindered and that way it would negate even if you are like, just like if you're moving an open ground here you don't get the minus one because it's hindered because you're firing through that side of the orchard here that entire shot is hindered matter of fact that one would be plus two oddly enough you know so that's exactly the same problem as you have in the depiction on there it's leaving the confines of the roadway because if you move from e4 to f3 you couldn't use the road bonus rate you're not using the road you're leaving the road right okay but you can't move from z2 to uh, y4 or y, y3 using the mode, mode, road rate you are correct you can't move the, using the mode, mode rate. you're correct because you're not on the road right because there's no road so, here. And therefore, right, right. therefore yeah. that's why E4 and F3 is hindered. Because there's no road there. There's no road open, essentially opening up that orchard. There's no road here in Y3 to Z2 opening that orchard side to you. Right. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I think, I think as you said, I mean, if you take that orchard, if you, if you put that back to just being or, open ground, uh, the road, not the orchard, then right, and then then this picture here is not the same as as the one on the GameSpot site. Right, because it doesn't leave the confines yeah. of X three, the Orchard Road hex. Right. So yeah, so that's that's why that's, I think that's the difference between between the two examples yeah. there. Now, if this one was if this one was this, okay. So so you say if I move into T five, I yeah. don't get I I I am not in the open. Uh, hold on. If I move if I move from S six to T five. From Z two. No, no. Let's let's. 
I, I, I'm moving my guys in. Yeah, my guys are there, okay. and I go right. to T five. Right. Correct. Okay. I am not in the open. From Z two, you, you are not in the open. Correct, because of that little divot right there. Because of because of the bullshit that's happening in V four. Okay, right, let's 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 assume, because most of us do, that <laughs> that road is straight. Straight is correct. straight. But then, let's assume that it is it is arrow straight. Yes, arrow straight. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, I'll I'll, I'll do I'll do that for you. Am, am I can am, am I still moving the open? At that point. I would say yes. You are moving in the I, open because you I are, wouldn't be because you're leaving the depiction of the of the orchard. Nope. But, but nope. that's not right. But the but the actual four hexes that are the actual orchard right. row hexes, you are not in the confine of the road. Right. Through those four hexes in the line of sight. That's what it's okay. the, through such hexes. So the such hexes being the actual four orchard roads. What happens after that doesn't matter. Right. It, it's through those four orchard road hexes. It does not okay. the depiction of the road. Now on the other, now on the game squad site, it did leave the. They did leave the or it, it did leave the. It did leave the confine of the road in that orchard road hex because because that, that actual. We, I, hold on. If I go back to the the guys in F three firing out is the actual orchard road hex. It actually leaves the line of. It actually. Um, does not fully go through um, the line of sight. The line of sight leaves the road before it leaves the orchard road hex. So it's almost as if, like, you could imagine, like, there's a there's a tree right at the at the right at the like E four F three right right. And so that's I think what they're trying to depict there because that, that it's inherent the, terrain. If if orchards were not inherent terrain, that would be a clear shot. But only because orchards are inherent terrain, it's an orchard hex. It's an orchard hex first, road hex second. Now, if that was if that was trees, right? If that was if 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 that was trees, and let's say the trees just went to the hex binds uh, of F three E three E four, and then F three F four E four, and it kind of opened up on the end, that would be an open shot. But because of the inherent terrain nature of orchards, that is not simply because it doesn't cross an orchard like thingy doesn't mean it's not an orchard hex. Because it's inherent terrain, it's like it's like firing from CC five to BB four or BB three. Does that hit an orchard depiction? No, but it's an orchard hex based on the pro on the properties of inherent terrain you still apply the modifier and the exact same thing happens in that depiction in E4 and in our depiction in V4 and uh, in V4. The same, the same principle applies is that it's inherent terrain first. If it weren't, then you would have a different answer. Okay, so you're saying it's the it's the divot in the road that makes the difference. The divot, right. yeah, because the road does not the road stops; it does not continue, and therefore, the line of fire leaves the confines of the road, regardless of what direction you're firing. It leaves the confines of now. Now the difference being, check this out: C5. Let's say F3 were there, right? A C5 unit moves to D4 and E4. He's not in the open at all, right? But let's say F3 goes to E4 and he wants to use the road in E4 for whatever reason. For whatever reason. At that mm -hmm. point, he's not in the orchard, he's in the road, and therefore C5, D4, E4 would not leave the confines of the road in the orchard road hex, and he would be subject to first fire moving in the open. But C5 would. But C5 wouldn't be going the other way if F3 were the unit. If, the, yeah, if, the, the, if you have a unit F3 and C5 moves adjacent to F3, he's not subject to first fire movement in the open in any of those hexes. Whereas if F3 uses the road, wants to use the road in E4, which he wouldn't, but let's say he does for whatever reason, um, then he would be subject to minus one first fire movement in the open because the line of fire from C5 enters the orchard road hex and doesn't leave the confines of the road. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, right. And my right, the exact same thing would be if, if the orchard instead of being in E4 was in D4, then your shot from C5 to F3 
would be open. But, but okay. The, 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 if you look at look at what it says. Before. It says, it, yeah. Sorry. Right. Because. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. It's just, it says, for line of sight through hex 42 e4, which is on Game Squad. Not, same yep. level line of sight is always hindered by the orchard. Through e4. Always. Through e4 is yes. always. Um, through it, yes, but not from it. No, I'm not talking about from it. I'm talking about through it here. Correct. Yes, that's so, exactly right. But it's right. the so e5, e5 to d4. Or, sorry, f3 to d4. Right. Correct. Does that does that get a hindrance? Yes. Yes. Then because... I don't see the difference between that and the other one. Okay. On okay, the board. Take, it take, it take our board. Do, are you still in Basel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, where's my here's my orchard. There's my road. You're firing on me. You're firing on that unit there. Is that shot hindered? Uh, I would say yes. Same. The same. Exact same example. Okay. Well, it's exactly the same. Yeah. No, but if if you if you draw a line of sight from F three to F four, it's it's on the road, right? It's to the road. The uh, same as if you get rid of. I mean, it, let's make. I don't know. Let's let's make that the bend in the road a, a clear road hex. Right. 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 And and the other one is what is it X. X three is a dead end, but it's 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 the road ends open, right? right. What's the, the difference? The difference. You, are, the difference. You, the difference sorry, is the same uh, thing as in D five. D five has um, D five is a building hex, correct? D five. Uh, yes. Okay. Right. Building hex. Can yep. you be an open ground in that hex? Is there another oh, position? Uh, right. Other than bypass or yeah, right. or holding, holding that's because the, the building is not energy. inherent terrain. The orchard yeah, is no. that entire okay. hex, other than the road, is orchard. I don't care how thick or thin it is; doesn't matter. It's inherent terrain, and therefore, if a unit were on level one on F three, D four and C five would be blind. Yeah, yeah. The same principle applies because you're firing quote through the orchard or over the orchard is the exact same thing you're firing through the orchard or over it if you're on if that was a level one location in f3 those all those hexes are blind past e4 because you're firing okay. through the orchard let's assume we're on d4 then right? on on the game squad d4 and game squad. We're on, correct we're, we're on d4 correct i want to fire to f3 f3 uh okay. yes what are my modifiers plus four three for the building one for the hindrance Okay, I, I, I don't see a difference between um, the, the the fact that the or let's okay, hold on, hold on. Well, go to Vasil. Look at Vasil. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Unit X three fires on unit Z two. What are the modifiers? Uh, depends on what the guy's doing, but you're gonna add plus one for sure. Why? Because of the orchard. Okay, same thing. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, come on. Control S. Okay, Control S. Here we go. Control S. Look at, look at him be a, a construction engineer. I mean, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, one more. All right. We'll, we'll, be lay, we'll be laying bridges next week. All right. Yeah, that's right. Bailey bridges. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, now let's let's say the road dead ends right there. Let's say the road dead ends. Exa that is exactly the road because somebody created a shitty ass map and <laughs> that's the road we have, right? Okay. okay. Now you fire upon me either direction. What's the modifier in either direction? If if you're moving, if you move to Z Z Z Z two, what's the modifier four six seven gets? Uh, let's say you salt move. Let's salt I, move. I'm, I'm gonna, I, so, um, I mean, what did you? I don't. I don't know. What you moved into. Um, I'm Orchard. gonna say you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get the the one hedge. Uh, the, what, it, it's gonna be. The non-assault movement is no. going to cancel. No, let's say let's say assault move. So we don't have to worry about okay. that modifier. Assault okay. move 
into Z2. Uh, salt moves into Z2. Uh, you're going to get plus one. Uh, from what? Actually, plus, actually, possibly plus two, depending on... No, from the squad in W4. The the so plus four. one, yep. Yeah. yeah. No, so the, that the was orcs good. the hinders. It's not yeah. a TEM, right? The orcs not a TEM, yeah. right? Yep, yep, yep. So the modifier so is zero, right? Oh, I think it's one. One from what? Because you're leaving the you're you're leaving the orchard. I'm saying you're leaving the orchard road. Uh, right, but that's between the fire. Yeah. Right. You don't you, yeah. you don't get a plus one. If you were like that, then that would be right because you'd be in between it. But being in an orchard doesn't matter. The orchard is your tem. Yeah. yeah assuming there's no leaving... smoke there, you don't add the hindrance of yeah. the orchard in the hex that you're in. So that no. fire. Even though it doesn't leave it doesn't leave the confines of Y three, right? So you don't but apply Y three, but you're but going into Z two. Z two is no TEM. Orchard is T zero TEM. Yeah, it's a hindrance. Right. If you're and you're, far, if it's the between fire. the targets, so it's not between the targets, it's part of the target hex. So he doesn't add the hindrance at that point. If you were an A two, well, that would be a plus one, right? Instead of a plus well, two. Well, again, I it's it's leaving you're leaving the road depiction right but it's but it, but it, but that's but that's a target hex like if it were right here if you were if you were an aa2 what would the modifier be if you like let's just say you uh, not assault moved to aa2 well, hold on hold on so it, it goes through there that you're i can see to that hex so after the hex yeah okay right so after that hex yeah okay after in the hex you moved into yes it would be it would be flat yes right flat exactly okay because yes. it didn't leave the confines of our our beautifully constructed ro road, right there, right. The, 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 our fine road, our fine German engineers forgot to turn left instead of going straight, so they screwed that one up. They screwed the pooch on that one. I so think uh, that's California Highway, right? So that um, doesn't leave the confines of the roadway, right? But let's take our our. I think our it road does. Right? It does after though. Okay, the road's like that. Yep. Does it leave the confines of the roadway? Yeah, absolutely. So therefore, the hindrance would apply. Yeah, because it's after it's after that. No, let's say the road's like this, and you're firing from Y four to Z two. It's going to leave the confines of the roadway, which theoretically you're leaving the confines of the Y three. Yeah. And it's going into the orchard inherent terrain hex. So therefore, the orchard rule applies. E four is exactly the same thing. Well, okay, let's let's so so let's if that hex is if that all open and you're firing up the road. Right. Right, right, right. Let me let me move it. And right. and that or yeah. And and we're gonna make that open ground. Right. That that road that that bend in the road, Y three right. Y two, Y three is an open ground hex. Right. Does the fire leave the the fire, the fire, the, the line of fire leaves the confine of Y3. But it doesn't matter because it's not an orchard road hex. It's not an orchard road hex. The road only apply. the rule only applies if based on woods roads and orchard roads. Because you don't care about this one. Because this, because if, if, if you can't apply a minus one here because it's like grain or something like that, then it doesn't matter whether it leaves the confines of the roadway or not. Okay, but the root, the, the the wording that we're seeing here is line of sight in an orchard road hex is clear only if it stays on the road right, depiction. Right, right, in an orchard road hex, the Y three is not an orchard road hex. Right, my right. my feeling, my my feeling is that the game squad is the the example they have is correct. Their wording is wrong. What's what's the wording in the example? What's the word? What's the, what's the argument they have here? Right. In other words, he says that um, they they just basically turn around and they just said line of sight in an orchard road hex is clear only if it stays in the road depiction. Period. Okay, but that's not quite what B fourteen point six says. Okay, and so I think that's where the confusion comes in. Um, is that is that in their example in in their example yes the line of sight from C five to F three has to take into account the orchard in E4. Right. Um, but that's because the orchard is in E4. If the orchard, instead of being in E4, was in D4, then you'd have the same situation that we have on our map here, 
with Y3 being the open, with Y3 being the open hex, Y3 now being E4. Okay. And, and, and so if the orchard was in D4, then the shot between C5 and F3 would in fact go basically fire right down the road because, well, nobody's going to put an orchard right, put an orchard tree right in the middle of the road. Okay. And, and so that is clear in that case. But, right. but because the orchard is in E4 on the, on the example on Game Squad, you, as I said, you assume that there's, let's say, there's a tree right on the E4, F3 side. There's an orchard tree right there. And that's what's blocking the line of sight, even right. if there's not really a tree there. That's what, that's what the inherent terrain is giving you. Exactly. So, so there, there is a difference. And, It'd and be so interesting I, to know it, that if, 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 I was, if, I was, if I was the poster, I would have po I would have asked my opponent, okay, if there was a green splotch along the E4 F3 hex side, would it be clear? That's what I would ask my opponent. Would it be clear? And then I would go into the principles of inherent terrain. And it doesn't matter whether the green splotch is there or not. It just it, that that hex side is not an open ground hex side. That hex side is an orchard hex side. You know, they planted the trees alongside of it. They may have not have theoretically planted anything right there, but hey, that's that's where they put it. That's where it's that's that, that's the basic of the rule. Otherwise, it'd be just otherwise you'd actually have orchard depictions, which would make all your LOSs really harder in hell to find out if you're not going to hit the orchard or not. You know, I mean, I, there's tons of orchards where I live. You could look that right down the orchard row, even if you're looking down the orchard rows that aren't roads. It's just the amount of space that you have. You still have like trees and leaves and things like that. You can still see pretty far. I mean, for the most, for all intents and purposes, but I think simply because just the dynamics of an orchard, they're usually only about 10 or 15 feet apart versus 40 meters or 15 meters or something like that. I mean, there's a big difference of, of 15 meters and 10 feet, you know, so it's assumed that there's other brush or whatever bullshit that's part of the orchard. Well, I now have a quest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, as I said, yeah, I, I just said, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting, but I, I, as I said, I, I, I think it's a very, I think it's a lot more subtle than I kind of first thought it was. Yes. And I think, I think the example that you saw in Game Squad just shows how subtle it is. Yeah. But, well, uh, I, but I, I gotta, I gotta bolt because I gotta, gotta help with dinner. Okay. Um, but good talk to you guys both. Um, I'm, I now have something to, to look at, and uh, uh, thanks for doing this, Stu. Yeah, talk sure. Sure. Uh, it's yeah, it's 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 like three hours, but I got two hours. But you know, we we have good discussions. It just kind of it just kind of right. goes on. All right. So, but, all right, later, Steve, we'll take we'll take it easy. Yeah. Well, but don't don't all games of ASL basically devolve into you know arguments about rules? Uh, yeah. Unless <laughs> uh, unless unless uh, uh, <laughs> that part of part of part of the fun. No, of the no, game. no, not always. It always devolves about how, how shitty my dice yeah. are and how lucky yeah. you are. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's, you're not that, screaming at your dice. Yeah, yeah you're that happens first. That's yeah. that's the obvious thing. But now the rules is like, okay, what, what? Yeah, yeah, right. Because we're never nobody's wrong. Yeah, you're you're smashing. You're you're taking out the hammer and smashing your dice because you've rolled four twelves in a row or something like that. Yeah, like it's the dice fault. Now you got to spend twenty five dollars <laughs> on another set of dice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that's, so, you, you should uh, handle the dice rather they would have rolled better. But yeah, that's a, that's yeah. A, that's a really good example and that's a really good question. And again, like uh, like uh, Craig Ben uh, who posted it uh, on board at forty two, that's that's what I that's what I've said. I would have asked is I would have asked my opponent, what makes you think? I mean, first of all, the the the, the reading of the rule because it leaves the confines of the orchard hex, right? Not just the complete line of fire, but the orchard hex. Yeah, um, uh, that it won't apply. And I would I would just go from that. I wouldn't say no, that's a hindrance, or yes, it's a hindrance. I said well. This is what the rule says, and is exactly what Steve had read. And it's just, yes, it looks stupid because it doesn't hit any open ground. And um, uh, that goes into the lock and load game that I was playing. It's really kind of odd. Um, and um, but anyway, it's the, this isn't lock and load, but because it doesn't look like there's a hindrance there, right? It's it's the same thing yeah, as like D three, yeah. right? D three, yeah, I right. think. Yeah, you, you don't think there is, or at least you you don't. You're right. D three, the think. entire hex is is hindered, and I think uh I think it the hindrance is at ground level. I think the way the inherent terrain, the inherent terrain and, and uh, hills is really kind of wonky versus non inherent terrain. I think the orchard, uh, 
I think the orchard in D3, is that actually at ground level versus at level one that's not on the hill? Whereas the hindrance, like if the wheat field were on D3 or up to D3, oh, yeah. it's not as weird. It's, you, know, you got to read the like 10.1. 10 uh, it goes right. in a long paragraph and it tells about inherent versus, versus non-inherent terrain and whether it rises to the level or is actual what the depiction is. The same sort of thing up here. It's a visual, it's a visual discontinuity um, that that occurs often in ASL because it doesn't look oh that, like the other image they showed somebody posted them on Facebook is like F three say F three in the example there they had they had two little tiny 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 buildings like the size of the little blocks in F three in that top building that okay, tiny yeah. building there but the building was a level two building so it went up two and a half levels it was it was a multi hex building and he says what level of those because the, the line of fire crossed those two tiny little building depictions but it didn't cross the giant building that had the big square in it for the two levels okay. he says is that line of sight blocked and he says yes those two tiny little buildings are assumed to go up to level two and a half oh okay yeah yeah so, it's right. on yeah. facebook it's really wonky and that's about as non-intuitive as you're going to get uh, yeah, that's true. That would, I would probably attribute that to a pretty bad board design yeah. at that point. If or you're really or lack of rule or say, you know, if, if there's a smaller building that's not part of the building that contains the square, that building is at ground level only, that sort of thing. But yet doesn't doesn't matter. You're still considered in hex the whole way. So, yeah, that's a wonky one. I would have I would have said that LOS is clear because of that, but it's it's not. But yeah, yeah the but same again, thing here, the same. But yeah, the confines of the orchard road hex is the key is the key thing yeah we like, yeah, yeah we did not apply to such hexes yeah. yeah and and i think that's that's yeah yeah so that's, yeah. that's 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 kind of the difference yeah so there is a there is a difference there so yeah. all right yep but um but yeah but as i said yeah that would be something that you just wouldn't and as i said i may not you know back to our original map i may not even notice the the v4 u5 thing you right. know <laughs> that's pretty close that's pretty you know, yeah, that, you know, although although i have to imagine that's probably in, that has to be kind of intentional to a certain extent because they designed these the, these starter kit boards pretty carefully I, th I think to a large extent um uh, you, you, know, you know you know i don't know i think i think they yeah. might but the way it gets printed out might be different because if you if you look at the um if you watch the game i think the first game steve and i did it was the first one in yeah. bounty fire pulling flames um, okay. The line of sight from the guy on the third level hill, um, uh, when you set up normally, it's just like it's like the hill is at T five, right? Okay. And he's got yeah. and, and the orchards here are woods hexes, and like the the bad guy has to go up through the road. Well, it's he's got a hex like V four where it leaves the road depiction, so therefore hits the woods, so therefore. That entire approach is completely blocked. Whereas if you just kind of glance at the board, yeah, you know, yeah. like this one here, you glance down the road, you think it's clear, but it's not. And, and it certainly looks like when you're when you design a board like that, that you want to put a defensible position where you can cover the entire woods road, but you really can't see past the first hex. And yeah. uh, and uh, it's really odd that that happens. And it, the problem is, it's it's subtle. You know, there's not like a, a hard angle. It doesn't jut out and cut back, so it's obvious. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you just would so know, subtle, yeah. and so therefore you begin to question: Well, did they shift the printing down two or three millimeters? Did they did they over superimpose the grid hex by two or three millimeters or a millimeter or two? You don't need to go that far on these hexes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, well, I suppose yeah, there there is that interesting. I mean, I just tend to think that with the boards now being you know computer designed as opposed to you know hand drawn now, yeah, um, cool. that that might give you a little more um, ability to kind of fine tune you know boards in particular ways to deny certain line of sights in very subtle ways or, or whatever. But as I said, I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not a map designer, so it'd be interesting to ask map designers. You know, how much do they really spend? on you know on 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 the ideas of trying to block certain line of sights and and do they coordinate with the um 
with the designer. Yeah. And right. as, as they're doing play testing and stuff like that, and they go, yeah, you know, we think this is too open or this shot's too open. So we'll just shift this down maybe a millimeter or two and, right. and, and cut the size. Yeah. I, I, it'd be kind of a fascinating discussion to have between designers and, and, and the board, you know, and the board drawers, you know, and, and, and see, you know, how yeah. much of a feedback loop that, that ends up being. And even in this scenario, to be honest with you, even in this scenario, say I've got a German unit down here in Z Z2. And um, when I when I started the game, I came through the woods and I came through the top. I didn't yep. even imagine that that line of sight was blocked. So theoretically, you can move this guy right here and then advance face here, and now you got a clear shot. Yeah, you know, yeah, where, yeah, where, that'd where be, that's yeah, hindered, that'd be subtle, you know? yeah. That that would be a subtle, subtle, subtle trick that you could pull, right? And um, you know, and then suddenly start blasting him straight down the road, you know. And um, you know, I mean, it still may not necessarily be the best move for you. I mean, he's still. Oh, actually, is he in open ground? Yeah, he's in. He's uh, an orchard. Yeah, he's an orchard. That's, that's not the best spot, yeah, but yeah, that would be an interesting. Yeah, I mean, that would be an interesting kind of line of approach. You know, that wouldn't at all be obvious. Right, right. But you know? again, just experience on the board, or I don't, I don't check LOSs on the board beforehand. I just play it, play it as it is. Uh, um, okay. but yeah, I mean, something like that, you might have to eyeball say, Oh, there's a little jut there. It might, it might, it might catch it. I, I, right. I and would, and would you, and would you take that risk in? <laughs> I, I, throw a half, I definitely throw a half squad there. To, yeah. To, it to might, yeah, it. might be interesting. Yeah. You know, if I had guys like low over here and it's a matter of by, bypassing it, or you can't bypass the starter kit, but if you go two, four, five, six versus one, two, three, four, five, you know, you know, wherever you can move essentially without. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be a little more freedom of movement. Yeah, it, it might yeah, get it makes you a game. big difference because you know the top and bottom. I mean, like in my game, I I went I went directly way up top, and so I had to go through the woods. Whereas yeah. if I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm one more hex advanced. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that would that would be yeah that would then that could make a lot of difference. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe and I don't know, but I mean, because this would is this yeah this board must have been. Um, yeah, this board was with starter kit three, so that would have been right. that scenario. Maybe that was something they had in mind. Yeah, yeah. As I said, yeah, it'd be interesting. To, I mean, that's a whole another side street. You know, to talk to the designers and the map drawers and see yeah. see how see how much they coordinate with each other. You yeah. know, how much feedback and and that sort of thing. So, all right. Well, um, I guess it, it as I said, it is it is ten fifteen out yeah, here. It's late for you, and, so. No, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. I've got a couple more things I got to do, and and 